will be one of 16 left in the 2024 tournament. What a game. What an effort. Welcome back to the Sweet 16. Your Arizona Wildcats in Los Angeles getting set today to take on the Clemson Tigers from the Atlantic Coast Conference, the ACC, an unranked team. And if you believe what you read in ESPN this week uh, after they, quote, re-polled the final 16 teams, <laughs> Clemson, is number 16. Well, you don't want to look too much at that because if you do, you might just get bit today by a pretty good ball club that's playing great basketball and uh, knock you out of what your goal is, and that is to get back to Arizona next weekend for the Final Four. It is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show. My name is David Kelly. I've got my guys with me right here. Calvin Efon is the captain. He is from 1998. J.W. Madden also here today as well. And uh, we are with you for the next three hours as we take you up towards game time in Los Angeles. It'll be a 4.09 tip-off today. Brian Jeffries and Ryan Hansen will have the call right here. You'll hear it on Wildcats Radio 1290. All right, let's give you a little indication on what we've got in store for you over the course of the next three hours. Let's take a look at the Right Way Rundown and see what's coming up on our pregame show. Brought to you by Right Way Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Do things the right way. All right, we'll review the win over Dayton last Saturday in Salt Lake City. Get you set for Clemson with your first lick. Look, brought to you by Window Depot. Spotlight on a cat is going to be the guy that transferred in from North Carolina, Caleb Love. His former teammates are also in Los Angeles. There might be a meeting between them if both schools can get by tonight's action. We'll give you your Pac-12 scoreboard. Who's left in this thing beside the Arizona Wildcats? Uh, a view from courtside. We'll chat with Clemson play-by-play man Don Munson. Your best bets tonight's game Arizona versus the Clemson Tigers on the big board at the Desert Diamond Casino is minus seven in favor of the U of A U of A a seven point favorite in this game all of that and a whole lot more coming up for you over the course of the next three hours guys it's an unfamiliar opponent which obviously you're going to get uh, <laughs> we, we've gotten them obviously in the first uh, two rounds of this thing. And uh, Clemson Tigers, uh, not a lot of history between these two teams, but, uh, but a Clemson team that comes from a very good conference in the ACC. They bang up against the North Carolinas and the Dukes and the Virginias on a weekly basis. Uh, and this is a team that uh, Brad Brownell, uh, you'll hear him say a little bit later on, felt like when they were struggling in the middle of the season, had what it took to get to Arizona. When I say get to Arizona, I mean get to the Final Four. It's a team playing with a lot of confidence coming off two wins after they lost three or four down the stretch. Kelvin, your initial thoughts on today's contest. Man, you know, when, you, when you're doing when, when you're going back, checking on Clemson, doing all your homework on these guys, what you see is a veteran group that are physical and have been tested versus some tough teams, so they're not going to give in. Uh, I, I looked at their record. It's like five or six losses were about were by one or two points. Uh, uh, and then right there in the middle, they had three games where, you know, they, they went on a little losing streak, but they showed a lot of character by getting it back together and, and, and you know, and making a run in this tournament. So it's just a veteran group, I feel like, that plays uh, just a, a a physical brand of basketball, a team brand of basketball. And we're going to have to come out here and be fundamentally sound to be able to beat them. Because I think the biggest thing I've noticed about them, J-Dub, is that they don't beat themselves. Yeah. Well, that happens when you have two guards leading the way that have guys 290 career games yeah. between the two of them, between Gerard and Hunter. Uh, when I look at Clemson, I really look at P.J. Hall and Ian Shefflin. Those two guys really cause a lot of trouble because they're both three-level guys who are very willing and uh, skilled passers. And so if you get P.J. Hall, if we've seen recently in Clemson's uh, NCAA tournament games, it's Ian Shefflin who's done a lot of the – 
setup for those offensive sets where he's such such a big body down there, 6'8", probably 245, 250. Mm -hmm. And he's got really nice hands, really nice touch. Between him and P.J. Hall, that front line may be just about the best complete front line Arizona's seen in a minute. And as you said, D.K., they've struggled at times this year. But right now, Clemson's playing about as good as they have all season long. They started this year uh, with a record of 10 and 1. They went through a uh, 4 and 6 stretch. And as I mentioned, they lost 3 or 4 down the stretch, but now have won two in a row to get themselves to the Sweet 16. Arizona knocked off Dayton. It started with a win over Long Beach State in Salt Lake City last week. Got up early on Dayton. Dayton made a run before the Wildcats were able to, to finish off that contest. Uh, Tommy Lloyd on. The way his team played in a 78 to 68 win. I was hoping that we could really come out and, and get after him defensively and, and really, you know, just play with a bunch of active energy and kind of get him on their heels. And we did. Uh, unfortunately, they responded. And uh, but that's how these games go. And, and you know, we've been really talking about just being steady. You know, staying locked in. Obviously, not getting too high, not getting too low. And even as a staff, you know, we have a pretty active, emotional staff. So we've talked about our, us kind of taking a breath and just, you know, helping our guys stay in that zone. You think Ricardo Foyce is, is active and emotional? I mean, I, I think I think Coach Rob is about the calmest one out of them all. But if you look at the bench sometimes, uh, Jack Murphy and Ricky Foyce, uh, they, they can get very animated. Ricky Foyce especially uh, gets very animated down there. Uh, on the sidelines he's made if there's a guy that got to reel in a little bit it might be might be coach voice down there a big night for Jaden bradley though for the arizona wildcats in that win over the uh uh over uh Dayton flyers Dayton. yes thank you very much uh, brain brain cramp there it happens uh Jaden in 27 minutes uh, in that contest so would finish uh off the bench uh with a very nice uh 12 points for the Wildcats, hitting three of seven from the field, five of six uh, from the line. Uh, it was a, 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 a exactly what the doctor ordered uh, for this team. And on a night when Kylan Boswell could not, not find his shot, only scoring two points, but still he loved what his guy did to back him up. Jaden killed it tonight. I'm so happy for him. Um, it's so crazy on this team. It would be one guy's night, then the next guy's night. It doesn't really matter. Um, but when Everybody has their back and everybody puts confidence, you know, for each other. Um, that's what happens. I thought JB was doing a really good job against that that pressure up top of handling it and not panicking and, you know, even, you know, kind of went at him a couple times, you know, and those are high-risk plays when you're attacking a press like that, but that's how you go. You want to go downhill with the press and, and before they can set their defense. So I, I was just, you know, proud of the way JB responded. You can maybe say he's biding his time, but... When you're on an elite team, you know, guys have to make sacrifices. And that's the only way it works. And and, and JB's character is so high. And he's an absolute winner. Um, I mean, I, I told him after the game, I appreciate him, you know, hanging with it. And I appreciate him hanging with me. Um, he, he's going to be an elite player. He's going to end up being a, a one of the Arizona greats at the end of the day. And, and him accepting that role this year has allowed us to be the team we are today. So I'm really thankful for that. You know, and guys, we talk about, you know, this team, and right now it's a rotation uh, of really eight guys when you look at Jaden Bradley, K.J. Lewis, and, and Matthias Kravos coming off the bench. Uh, and six of those eight guys, you know, we, we, we mentioned Caleb and, and, and Keyshot because they've been to, the been to the finals, but six of your core eight guys ha have played in this environment before, and Jaden Bradley is one of those guys. Yeah, no, he's he's one of those guys. He's played big time basketball. Coming from a school like Alabama, you, you, you're talking about the number one pick in in the NBA draft. He he played alongside of him, started alongside of him a lot of games. So I, I just think that he's not afraid of the moment. People forget he's a McDonald's All American. You have a McDonald's All American coming off your bench. Uh, so so for him to be able to have the wherewithal and the understanding and the trust for his coach to understand coming off the bench because coming here he understood Colin was here. Uh, I don't know if he knew Caleb Love was coming. Right? <laughs> I don't know if he knew about that, but eventually Caleb Love come uh, came. But coach just uh, uh, you know you're already here, you're already dedicated to the program, you're already signed, committed. So hey, you just make the most of it, and I just think that's what he did. I mean, he took his time, he figured out where he. Could could be effective at and 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 now he's been very aggressive especially offensively uh, um, um, scoring the ball and, and doing great things for the team and when you look at this bench uh what we got uh, in that game against Dayton was a 23 to 2 count we've seen it happen 
in a number of these games where Arizona gets a, a nice scoring output from their bench, and, and, and that was huge in the win over the Flyers. It's becoming a regular scheduled program. I think, you know, me, uh, JB, and uh, Crevish, you know, we take our, our roles very serious. We, like, we know what we mean to the team and know what we got to do when we get in there. That's KJ Lewis. I love the way he put that. It's becoming a regularly scheduled program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coming up next, the bench mob <laughs> at the I, University of Arizona. You know, the only thing I was thinking about, J Dub, I'm always looking into the future and I'm always looking deeper, right? And and when he said that, I was like, you better be careful. You could be the six man <laughs> next year too. And you're coming out the bench again, so you you know, so you you you, you like it, but is that what the role? You know, because I've seen that happen to the Jason Terry's and. Even to Pella, you know, a couple times, whatnot, they end up working out and whatever they do. It worked out okay is, for JT, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going to work out. But, but you know, again, I'm sure he's a guy that's going to want more minutes and want a bigger role for sure. Well, <laughs> how do you keep him off the court, right? I mean, K.J. Lewis is a kid right now. No disrespect to Mr. Lewis out there, but Kelvin, I mean, he's the worst he's ever going to be right now. Think about that. Yeah. Ooh. And the effort's always going to be there. So his skill level is going to keep improving. And K.J. is a problem already. But, yeah, I mean, try to keep him off the court. Early in that ball game against the Dayton Flyers, the Wildcats had trouble kind of holding on to the basketball. A lot of turnovers in that first half. It was something they had to cut down in the second if they knew they wanted to win. Uh, just trusting in the plan. You know, we saw, we watched the clips at halftime. Um, you know, they came out pressuring the ball, trying to turn us over. So I feel like second half we did a great job with our, uh, our press break. You know, just not dribbling too much, passing it, you know, taking time off the clock. Yeah, pretty much same thing with JB said. I think uh, we adapted to you know what they were doing, kind of running and jumping uh, sporadically, and uh, we was just trying to get open for you know JB having outlets um, and for Colin and you know Pella uh, just being open and available so you know we can get the ball up the floor. And Pella Larson adding that the Wildcats just had to slow the game down at the offensive end of the floor. Uh, just take care of the ball, uh, poise, play on two feet like. No play is worth the turnover. No play is that important to turn the ball over. We knew it was our ball and the jump ball, so it, worst case, we just hold on to it. Uh, but, yeah, mainly just take care of it and play the free throw game, really. You know, it's interesting, uh, you know, Kelvin, you hear things sometimes and you don't really realize maybe uh, the, the, how uh, technology has come into the game. I, when he said we looked at the film at halftime, uh, you know, it's, it's no longer coaches drawing on the board at halftime. You can go in there and, and show guys video of what's happening now. And, and that is so much more, uh, a, a more clear view. Because I remember when coaches used to draw it up on the board. You're like, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that. You, that ain't what I did. That is not what I did. You got to show me the tape. And when you show the tape, the tape don't lie. The eye in the sky don't lie. So now they got it on the side. Man, I would love to be playing now because I was a tape junkie. I And I, I used to listen to Coach because Coach uh, in football, it was uh, Coach uh, Dickey. He was in charge of drawing up the plays and everything. So I believed him. I trusted him. Some coaches, not so much. Like, Man, you didn't see that. Yeah, come on. You weren't even paying attention. You know what I'm saying? You don't even look for those little things. But with that having that device where you can come in and show the guys right there, you can make a change quicker. I mean, you can see the guys. I mean, they said it. I mean, when you see yourself doing something wrong, you, you have to be a ridiculous, a ridiculous person to not want to fix it or change it for the better. Absolutely. That's, I mean, that's, I, I just love how, how, how those elements and we see it. I mean, we see it. I think we see it more in football because it happens during the game. I mean, you can yeah, see the them iPad. down the, with the iPads yeah. during the game. They don't necessarily, it's, you know, you don't necessarily well, see it that way in basketball, but it's happening at halftime. Well, the no, they're doing it in doing the, game doing it yeah, the game too. Yeah, yeah, they not, are. No, okay. I didn't have seen it in college, but I've definitely seen in it the in NBA. the NBA. Okay. So that time I got walk over there with that pad, like, mm. hey, look, this is what we're trying to do. So yeah, no, I've seen it in the NBA, but just hearing. You know, you you would think that it it would trickle down to a, a college, but right. hearing it and you, and hearing the guys being excited about, oh, hey, we got to make this change right now. That's that's. I, I just know as a former player that would have helped me for sure. And no disrespect, but we're all old men in here. <laughs> so like, here's the thing: like everybody on this team grew up with that technology, grew up with yeah. Internet 2.0, what I'll call it, after the year 2000, where video was actually a thing you could get a hold of, and before then you couldn't. So. When Kelvin and I were growing up, it was grainy VHS tapes of some dude he wanted to maybe emulate out on the court. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, why does Jason Tatum look like he does? Because he grew up with HD video of all of the guys he wanted to emulate, and he's out there on the court 
Kelvin practicing all those moves. So these guys on this team, they only know that. They yeah. only know that instant ramifications, instant, uh, what's it called, uh, where you can have a visual of that happening in real time. And so it's, a, it's a, just a part of the culture. One of the big things that came out of that game on uh, Saturday was Tommy Lloyd's decision to go small in the second half, take out his big man, Umar Balo, and insert Keisha Johnson into the five spot down low. Well, you know, I th thought they got pretty comfortable against the looks we were giving us, you know, and, and obviously, you know, we knew it was going to be an interesting dynamic, you know, when you have a, a mobile pick and pop, you know, kind of athletic big like Holmes, and then you have a, you know, a big Haas like Big O. Um, you know, there's going to be some give and take. And, you know, our, our plan with Big O really got us off to a good start early. They got a little comfortable and started attacking a little bit. So I just wanted to give them a different look. And, and, and I think we kind of did it right for a media because I wanted to get a look at it. And then it worked. I think we got a turnover the first time we did it. And, and so I was like, hey, let's just ride this thing out and see if we can kind of change the course of the game. And maybe they had to start attacking us a little bit differently and get them out of their rhythm. 22 minutes in that game for Umar Balo. He was 4 or 5. But, again, the, these are decisions. You know, Tommy Lloyd coaching up, coaching for the situation. What's going to work? I know Umar is my guy, but right now i got to try something else to keep these, these flyers at bay here. Well, I mean, it don't take a rocket science to know. All year we've watched in pick and roll or in pick and pop, uh, Balo plays drop. The drop coverage. Yeah. The drop coverage isn't going to work against a pick and pop three point shooter. So Balo, being a, a mature <laughs> basketball player and, and just a basketball per, player, period, he has to understand he can't guard that. So easily, that's a Keisha Johnson, that's a KJ Lewis, and those guys. I was thinking maybe Crevis as well. I thought Crevis could do a better job of guarding out on the perimeter, I think. Uh, but with that being said, I love that he went small right there because this is the time of the year where you're going to have to do that more because the teams you're playing don't have that big hoss for your guy just to bang with. They're going to pick and pop and try to find ways to bring him out away from the basket so they can create opportunities for themselves. Yeah, and I mean, roster construction is about putting together a group that can defeat many different varying styles, guys. And we've talked about Pella is my favorite small ball four for, what, three years now, Kelvin? I mean, Pella Larson at the four, Keisha Johnson definitely deserving of, of all defensive team honors, like Coach Lloyd said. When you have two guys like that that are so versatile and then all the guards, the small ball lineup you can't go to. Everybody talks Balo. That's the force under the in the paint. That's where you're going to feed him early to get the the early easy offense to get open shooter looks for open shooters. But when you need to DK, this roster is constructed just for that. When you need to go small, they have ideal versatile players at the you know three and four positions that they can slide down to that five if necessary. So yeah, never doubted the ability for this group to go small and be successful. All right, it's another pick-and-pop guy on the roster today for the Clemson Tiger Tigers, P.J. Hall. We'll get into a little bit about what he might be able to do coming up a little bit later. It is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show. We also want to hear from you today. Earlier game, 409. We're going to have to get up real early today, but you got an early afternoon game, a game that aligns with happy hour and party hour. So it's going to be fun here in Tucson today. Where are you watching the game today? Let us know. 520-848-1290. You can call in. You can text in. You can message us in on any of our social media platforms. Uh, it is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show along with J.W. Madden and Kelvin Ephon. I'm David Kelly. You're listening to Wildcats Radio 1290. This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Advanced Auto Care, Crest Insurance Group.
Ed's basketball game is brought to you by the Window Depot. Lowest prices and biggest inventory. Shop the Window Depot.com. Hunter shoots past Gerard. He can stroke it and he hits again. He could do that with his bl- blindfold on right there. Hunter, get it. 17 points for Hunter to lead all scores. And they're up a dozen. A Clemson team that is playing with supreme confidence. Paul throwing a haymaker. So good with the high low action. Five to shoot. Shefflin to work. Looks it up and his prayer is answered. What a potentially back-breaking sequence this is for Baylor. Three-pointer, no. And Clemson's march through the madness will continue to the City of Angels. Yeah, this is a Clemson team that is playing extremely well. They've won 11 games away from home this season. That is tied for the most. In program history, beat New Mexico in round one, got out early in that game, and then coasted home, and then uh, got up on Baylor and were able to hold off the Bears, who made a fierce charge at the end to advance to the second Sweet 16 in the seven-year tenure uh, of uh, their head coach, or actually of the seven years that they've been to the postseason, I should say, under their coach, Brad Brunel. It's the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to tip-off show, David Kelly, Kelvin Efon, J.W. Madden getting you set for the Wildcats and the Clemson Tigers today. It'll be the first game of the day on the NCAA men's basketball front. We'll update you on everything that's happening as well. The other game in Los Angeles today will be the Alabama Crimson Tide and the North Carolina Tar Heels with the winners meeting Saturday in the regional final. It has not, uh, that game you heard for, in terms of uh, Clemson, they played Sunday. So they've had a, le- a one less day to get ready for this game against Arizona. They played Sunday and Memphis. It has been a difficult travel week for them. We got home at 3.30 in the morning on Sunday. Um, and then, you know, kind of realized we play on Thursday. So we better get back out to California. And uh, so we chartered a plane and, and uh, we had to drive an hour to Greenville. So we left campus at four o'clock. So we were really only home about 12 hours. Um, and, you know, yesterday was a little challenging. We practiced, but it wasn't easy. Um, just trying to get our legs back, just get used to the time change and, and all of that. I'm, you know, I'm optimistic we'll be ready to go. But it, it, it's been a quick turnaround. That's, that's for sure. A lot of sleepless nights for the staff trying to get ready. Okay, so you know why we talk about how important seeding is during the regular season, guys? Yeah. That's it, right That's there. It. I mean, the reason why you play the regular season to get as high a seed as possible is so you avoid the 4 a.m. return trips to campus and then 12 hours later leaving to go all the way across the country, Clemson to Los Angeles, not a short trip. So Arizona and any other team in the country, Kelvin, you want to not you want to avoid those headaches mm-hmm. travel-wise. Play good to the re- during the regular season. Play strong non-conference opponents. That's it's a simple formula, indeed. Uh, and uh, Clemson is no stranger to one Arizona Wildcat who goes by the name of Caleb Love. I, I played them, and you know they always was physical. They always a tough nose, you know, team, uh, well coached. Uh, you know, um, obviously I played them three years um, already, so um, I kind of I'm familiar with them, so. Uh, I think we just got to come in, you know, ready to ready to go, and uh, it's going to be a competitive game. Uh, coaches, you know, talked about it's going to be a knockdown drag out uh, as far as, you know, the physicality, and, uh, you know, we can't come in, you know, uh, thinking it's sweet. So uh, I think we're ready to go. Uh, my mindset is ready. All right, so freshman year, North Carolina at Clemson. Tar Heels lost. Caleb Love, 2 of 10, 1 of 6 from 3, scored 9 points. Uh, sophomore year at Clemson, North Carolina won. Caleb, four of 12, two of seven from three, 10 points. And then junior year, home against Clemson, won. Caleb Love, seven of 12, six of nine from three, 23 points. So struggled against the Tigers the first two times, uh, but played extremely well against them last year in February uh, to get the W. And again, just like he knows them, uh, they know him 
pretty well as well. Uh, Joe Girard on, or Joe Girard the third on Caleb. I'm sorry, this is PJ Hall. PJ Hall on Caleb Love. Star player for sure. He's uh, definitely coming to his own this year. He's, he's having a great year, one of his best um, statistics year as well. I mean, it's, it's incredible to watch. And uh, can I keep track of from afar after playing against him for a couple of years? But, um, you know, other than that, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good players in that team. And uh, one thing that we've done these past two games, try to make guys uncomfortable, try to make guys get out of a rhythm. And I think that's kind of the same thing for this game. Uh, I think that kind of speaks in general for all games. When you're going to go great player like that. You just got to kind of try to limit his chances. So, you know, at the top, I said these are two teams that don't know each other. But obviously, this is a coach in Brad Brun- Brunel who knows Arizona's best player quite well. How will that help him in trying to devise a game plan? I, you know, honestly, I don't really think it helps you no more than anybody you play against. But for the simple fact of you have video, you have the the stats, you have all the information on everybody. Um, I mean, I mean, your guys may not be intimidated with them because they know them and they played against them. I could, I could probably say uh, that is probably the most, you know, thing that you have on your side. But at the end of the day, with with with, with the way that you can, we talked about it earlier. The kids have been having the the devices where they can look up and see what everybody is doing. So I, I don't really think it's a big advantage at the end of the day. Yeah, you got to play the game. You're, that's where you at now. You got to play. Used to be right. I mean, used to be being having two eyes, Kelvin, at the game. You could evaluate so much better, guys. Tendencies. Now we're talking about things like takes one dribble left and then pulls up from 15 to 10 feet in. Like, that's his tendency, does that 80% of the time. Those kind of things you can gauge so much better when you're there. But with all the cameras in the building nowadays and all the different angles they got, I mean, they have access to being able to study guys' tendencies. So it used to be playing three years versus a team in your league and that guy transfers to another school across the country, you've got some better firsthand experience, Kelvin, seeing what that guy likes to do and bring it up a scout. But now, like you said, nowadays with all the video out there, everybody's got basically the same same video. And I'll add the analytics. I mean, where you can go and look at the stats, you know what I mean? Of, <laughs> I mean, it tell you exactly where guys take all their shots and where they make their shots and where they miss their shots. I mean, that's the, the type of, uh, you know, things that they have to their, um, uh, that they can use now to help them uh, win these games. Joe Girard for the uh, Clemson Tigers, a transfer from Syracuse, came in here playing his lone season as a graduate transfer for the Tigers and has really uh, elevated his play this year. Uh, Career uh, 14-point-a-game average, uh, averaging 15 points this year, but really it's the shooting numbers, the shooting percentage up almost four points, three-point percentage shooting up almost four points, free throw uh, percentage up almost eight points. What has led to Joe Girard's successful play this year? You know, being consistent in the gym, trying to, you know, work out as much as I can. Um, but I think, too, you know, I obviously had some great teammates at Syracuse, great teams um, and a great system. And, you know, some of the guys, those guys are even in the NBA. But just a new system, you know, it's a, a different kind of offense where, you know, there's a lot of uh, – other great players around me who can do different things that kind of make my job a lot easier. Um, and, you know, it's just, like I said, that a lot of the credit goes to the system that Coach Barnell has here um, and obviously the players around me who you know, take take a lot of pressure off me to um, kind of just focus on maybe sometimes a, an easier catch and shoot than, you know, I've had before. What made, you, what made you ultimately choose Clemson and just being welcomed immediately and just mm-hmm. how things have gone this year? Uh, I think just being, you know, comfortable with them, familiar with them for four years, played against them a bunch of times, um, and you know, kind of knew the knew the system, knew the familiarity, knew how you know much these guys like playing for each other, and had a little bit of a connection to Coach Donlin back when he was at Michigan um, with Coach Beeline back to my high school days, so I was familiar with him. Um, and then when they Coach Donlin and Coach Barnell came to my house for an in-home visit, um, you know, I always tell the story. They were bragging about the locker room and how great these guys were to each other and, you know, how much they really enjoyed playing together. And that was something I wanted to be a part of for my last year. And I obviously knew how great they had, a, how great of a team they had last year. And a lot of those guys were coming back. So I had one shot at it to kind of get to a moment like this, to get back to a Sweet 16 like I did my sophomore year. And I felt like these guys gave me the best chance. And they've been nothing short of, you know, the best teammates I've ever had. Brian Hamilton from The Athletic, PJ Chase, why has Joe Benefit? Why, why is a fifth-year guy coming in from Syracuse, why has he fit so well in the room? Yeah, I think it's just because he's, he's a great player and a great guy. And, you know, um, you know, he came on a visit and, you know, we immediately clicked. You know, I told him that, 
you know, I want I want the best for both of us when he came, and uh, you know, I was glad when he committed. But I think the I think the biggest thing is, like he said, we're all great players, and we all want to see each other win. And so, um, you know, when that when that's on the court, you can you can see it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that speaks to his game, with the shooting and uh, playmaking ability, but. You know, that's not going to work out if you're not a good dude. And so, you know, coming on this visit first time and staying here for a couple of days and just meshing with the guys right away, uh, we all knew that he was perfect fit for our, for our culture and our program. And, you know, it's been nothing short of that. And so we uh, we get out and play golf a good bit whenever we're not in season and we, we have a good time. And it's, uh, you know, whenever you're able to connect with somebody that fast and that easy, uh, you know it's a good fit for the team. Yeah. At one point this season, Joe Girard III made 67 free throws in a row. Mm. Broke the previous ACC mark. I'm sorry, 60. Yeah, 67. Uh, broke the previous ACC mark of 66. Uh, pretty good. And the scary thing is, is he hasn't necessarily played well in the postseason so far. He's shooting just 29%, and he's missed 10 of his 13 threes. Uh, if he gets going, look out. This is this is even more of a dangerous team uh, that you're facing in the Clemson Tigers. Uh, this week veteran guards absolutely both teams with veteran guards that have come in and made a difference uh, on their seasons so far uh, Brad Brunell uh, saw a turning point I mentioned this was a team that started 10 and 1 we talked you know at one point during the season I think it was in January when we were struggling I had a, a really hard meeting with our players and and uh, you know I told him I was you know, we were teetering a little bit. We had an unbelievable November and December. We were, I don't know if it's just so excited to play. And we played a really hard schedule. And we won a bunch of games. And we were, we had like no adversity. And we were 10-1 and one and playing great. And then came back from Christmas and got smacked in the mouth by some teams in our league. Um, and had a hard time stringing some games together. We lost a bunch of close games, one one-point games. And uh, at one point, I told our team, I think we were four and six in the ACC, and I said, guys, you know, we need to understand something. Um, I think some of you guys think we're the 10 and one team. We're, right now, we're the four and six team. And if we go four and six again, we won't be playing in the NCAA tournament. And I said, that'd be a shame because of what you did the first two months of the year, but also because I think we're good enough to go to the Final Four. And uh, that's not something that I throw around. Uh, easily, and I asked my older players, "Have you ever heard me say that to you?" And they said, "No." Uh, you know, I know my 2018 team. I said the same thing to them. I thought we were good enough to do it, um, but obviously, we're going to have to finish the season the right way. And uh, we played better, um, still a little inconsistent at times, but I do think there's a belief that our guys have that that we're pretty good, and when we're when we're clicking. We can play with anybody in the country. We've proven that. You know, we've beaten some of the teams in this tournament. And, uh, you know, so I, I think that's a big part of it. But there's these seasons are so long. They're almost too long, to be honest with you. We start practicing in September, um, and now we're at the end of March. You're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have some, some, some times that don't go well, and you got to respond. Yeah, this was a this was a team that in midseason they won nine of thirteen. You heard him say they had a number of three one point losses. They lost uh, at home to, by three in double overtime uh, to Damon Stoudemire and Georgia Tech. Then they went to Duke and lost by one. Then they came home to Virginia and lost by one. And then they lost to NC State by one. So you're talking about uh, NCAA, NCAA tournament team in NC State, NCAA tournament team in in Virginia. NCAA tournament team in Duke. I mean, this is a tested team, and and it shows right there. Yeah, no, nah, that's that's the conference that they play in. I mean, and sometimes you need to get smacked like that. Arizona got some a couple of the same stories. Mm -hmm. They can, can say when we lost to uh, uh, what, what was it Oregon and, and Washington. I mean, in Washington. So you, I mean, Washington State. So you can yeah. you we got some of the same stories and the same ups and downs of the season. That's that's kind of how it goes. And but but what it get down to, you have both teams in the Sweet Sixteen and. Uh, uh, you know, veteran team to me, uh, Clemson. I mean, the guys that play, the guys that have the ball in their hands, the guys that make the plays. Just a veteran team, and to me, that's going to be the biggest uh, obstacle is 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 making those guys uh, speed up a little bit, making those guys a little uncomfortable. All right, that is your first look at the Clemson Tigers. 
That's been our first look at today's Arizona men's basketball game. Brought to you by the Window Depot. Lowest prices and biggest inventory. Shop the windowdepot.com. And don't forget, Window Depot also sponsors Arizona's top rebounding performance every night. It's the Window Depot glass cleaner of the game. Might be the Wildcat with the most rebounds. Might be the U of A star with the most impactful boards. We'll tell you the Window Depot glass cleaner of the game tonight on the Meridian Wealth Management postgame show. Arizona and Clemson tip off 409. It's the Sweet 16 in Los Angeles. This is Countdown to Tip Off along with J.W. Madden and Calvin Efon. I'm David Kelly. You're listening to Wildcats Radio 1290. This is is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip Off show on the home of Arizona men's basketball. Wildcats Radio 1290. Instantly elevate your space today. Visit a showroom and let our experts guide you. Whether you're choosing from ready-to-go designs or creating a custom masterpiece, we can help you select the perfect wood type, color, and style. And top it off with unique hardware to complete your look. Find a location near you at thewindowdepot.com. The Window Depot, more than a window store. Don't hold back. Just dive right in. This is Desert Diamond. The -the round-the-clock, off-the-charts, over-the-top spectacle that puts a shine on any day, any time. The tables are hot to the touch. The slots are spinning winners every day. And the point spreads are yours for the taking. So go ahead. Live the diamond life. Desert Diamond Casino. Visit ddcaz.com. An enterprise of the Donna Nation. 
This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown and Tip-Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Dayton with the ball. Holmes out top, leave it for Cheeks. Top of the circle. Has it knocked away by Love and a steal. Here goes Caleb the other way. Drives on Cheeks to the bucket. Lay it up and good. And the Cats take the lead. Our pregame show spotlight on a cat is brought to you by O'Reilly Chevrolet. Get more with O'Reilly Chevrolet. Caleb Love. We were talking about transfer guards who have made an impact. And obviously Caleb Love has made one. Second team All-American, Pac-12 Player of the Year. 92 three-pointers made this season. Sixth Wildcat to make 90 or more in a season. He's also one shy of tying his own personal single season high of 93. Average 19 points per game, seven rebounds. All right, this is last weekend. Average 19, seven, and five in the two games that Arizona won in Salt Lake City to get back to the Sweet 16 for the 21st time in program history. Caleb Love was asked by one Damian Alameda yesterday, sports director at uh, KOLD Channel 13 here in Tucson. What is the biggest misconception about you? I think me being a teammate. Uh, I think people, you know, think I'm maybe selfish or uh, I only think about, you know, shooting a ball or things like that, but you know, I really love, you know, uh, my teammates. I really love, it, you know, seeing them succeed, uh, seeing them get better. And, you know, I think that's probably the best, biggest misconception of me. But, um, you know, uh, I can't really, you know, I can't please everybody. Uh, I can't, you know, uh, you know, tell every fan about, you know, how much I love the game, how much I love my teammates, uh, how bad I want them to succeed. And, uh, you know, you're always going to have somebody that's, you know, thinking something of, of you or, you know, thinking something bad of you. So, you know, you just got to take it with a grain of salt and, you know, keep it moving. Kylan said that though at times he might come off as the big toughie on the inside, the big softie. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's my little brother. Uh, he probably, you know, obviously, um, you know, we got, a, we got a great relationship. And so uh, me and him uh, definitely, you know, created a bond. And uh, us working out each and every day together, he's got to know me. I've gotten to know him. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I want to, you know, get that energy off uh, on the court as far as, you know, being, you know, uh, you know, on the tough side or uh, giving that energy to the team just to, you know, give a spark for them. But um, off the court, you know, I'm, I'm a loving person and, uh, you know, I love all my teammates. I love, you know, my family, things like that. And so, uh, yeah. After Dayton, Tommy said that it was the Israel trip that he saw could have been potentially the turning point for this team in terms of chemistry. What yeah. do you say to that? I think uh, that he's right. Uh, you know, we've we created a you know a culture uh, starting in Israel, um, and I think you know he's done a great job at you know building our culture each and every day. Uh, out there, we got to you know know each other uh, really well. We was out there for about I think two weeks, and so uh, just knowing that um, you know we got to know each other, we got to know each other's backgrounds and things like that, um, what each other liked and what each other didn't like, and what people went through. I think. Um, it was great for us. It was great for our team, and uh, I think it's definitely built um, over the over the course of time. All right, you guys know I love the numbers. I love the numbers. You heard uh, me say it before we heard from Caleb that uh, he is now the uh, joins a a roster of six players who have made ninety or more three pointers in a season for the Arizona Wildcats. Who's on that list? Khalid, Damon, Salim. Am I right about them three? Uh, you got two of the three. The, the Stoudemire's are on it. Kerr made like 150 or something. Kerr only, is on it. Only year that he Khalid played. Is oh, a little I, know, bit who, short. I know who number one. Jason Gardner. No. Jason Gardner's not on there? He's not 90. Well, yes, he's on the list, but he's not number one. Salim is number one. Okay, I was going to say. Salim made Jason 120. Jason shot the most shots. <laughs> <laughs> He did. Yes. He's on he's on the list for in terms of three point field goals attempted. He is at the top of that yeah, list. Yeah. <laughs> two hundred and seventy six in two thousand and two. I was always jealous. He made hundred and six that. that year. So he is fourth on the list. Uh Salim is number one mm-hmm. at one twenty. Steve Kerr is number two mm-hmm. at one fourteen. Damon three at one twelve. Jason four at one oh six. You guys didn't get number five though. It's a it's a relatively recent player 
Mm. Relatively oh, oh, recent. Oh, uh, uh, Kerr Creason. No, not Kerr. Really? Kerr, Kerr never made. Kerr is a little bit short. He made 83 last year. Ooh, Courtney uh, made Courtney Ramey made 83 last year. Okay. Uh, ben Matherin made 83 Akinjo. the year before. Not a Kinjo. No, he really wasn't too much of a three point shooter. Yeah, he was getting to the cup. Gabe York. Oh. Gabe yeah, York. That makes sense. Is that number makes five sense. at 98. And then Damon again is number six at 93. So Damon in 93, 94 made 93. And then the next year. He made 112. He's got two spots. It's a long conversation, but it's so you, you can't really even compare total makes, right? Right. Because back in Steve Kerr's era, for instance, he only played one year with the three point line. Mm. He only shot 200 threes <laughs> and made 115 of them. I mean, That's how many crazy. threes are those other guys shooting? 400? <laughs> Twice as many threes, right? So it, the volume has gone yeah, so high area. as far as attempts go the last 15 years since Steph screwed everything up. Well, and it was a big first half for Caleb Love in the game against Dayton. Uh, and one guy that knows he can get hot is his teammate, Jaden Bradley. Caleb's a great player. He can get it going at any time. So, you know, just playing within an offense and, you know, him fighting the shots. And, you know, I think Big O does a great job kind of creating uh, double teams and is able to get Caleb, uh, get him going. 19 points against Dayton on 6-15 uh, of 15 shooting. And then the game against Long Beach State. Uh, Caleb, 6 of 17, had 18 points. He was asked, what is it about the month of March for you? Uh, I think, you know, it's just a big stage. Uh, me wanting to play in these moments, uh, these type, these big-time games. And, you know, I've dreamed of this as a kid, uh, you know, watching March Madness, uh, wanting to be on this stage. And I think um, I just kind of rise to the occasion. I, you know, whatever I can do to, you know, get the team to win, whether that's scoring, uh, rebounding, playmaking, whatever I got to do, defense, um, that's what I'm going to try to do. 12 of 32 are the totals so far in the tournament for Caleb Love. In terms of uh, three-point shots, he is 6 of 20. Uh, so that uh, that's a pretty decent percentage, I believe. That's right around, well, let me do my numbers real quick here. That's 30%, so maybe not as, as high as you'd like it to be. Uh, but again, doing a number of different things. He had the 11 rebound game against Long Beach State. And uh, he has dished out five assists in each of these ball games. So getting his teammates involved for sure. And I just want to say this one thing. I, I also, uh, you know, I heard him talking a little bit about, you know, how people saw him and everything. And, you know, guys sometimes that don't always smile mm. when they're competing and, you know, uh, grinning and everything and, and just, you know, uh, really about competing. His body language sometimes, you know, looked like, you know, may look like he's pouting. And sometimes you always can't read people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can't always read people and what's, what's in people's mind and what's in people's heart. You have to really pay attention to how they're playing and everything. And I, I feel like he got a bad rap because you know he seems like a quiet guy around most people and, and a lot of times as an athlete you've been stabbed in the back and you've been talked about and all these different things to where you kind of you know you kind of stay to yourself a little bit because you don't want the guy you was just doing an interview with he, you know you know uh, tonight he's going to go and write some whole different about you so you kind of stay to yourself a little bit but you know it's kind of cool that he had a chance to get here and change the narrative a little bit especially with his teammates because I'm sure they was apprehensive you know when he was first coming. Uh, he is on course this season uh, for career highs in scoring, rebounding, field goals made, two-point field goals made, which is big, uh, fewest turnovers, and steals as well. So, again, he's, uh, he's really broadened his game since coming over here to the Arizona Wildcats. 520-848-1290 is the number to get in on the program. If you'd like to talk some Arizona basketball with us, we'd love to hear from you as we get you set. You can watch this program. We are streaming it on a number of different platforms. We are on Facebook Live. We are on Twitch. We are on YouTube at Wildcats Radio 1290. Uh, we're on Twitter at Wildcats 1290. So you can listen to the show there as well as on our website, Wildcats Radio 1290. Uh, dot com. Don't forget the one of the places to be. I asked uh, a little bit earlier, where are you watching the game today? Well, I'm going to tell you a place you should probably be watching the game today, and that's Champs Kitchen and Bar. It's the grand opening, in fact, of Champs Kitchen and Bar, a place to be for the March Madness. It's, it's at 7625 North La Choya Boulevard here in Tucson. Champs Kitchen and Bar, the new go-to spot for sports and fun in Tucson. They have got things going on 
all month long through the national championship game on April the 8th. It's $5 Madness Specials. Slam dunk deal, folks. You don't want to miss this. How about $5 pizzas? Or you can get yourself a $5 burger. And to go with that, you can get a $5 pitcher. $5 Madness Specials. Go to Champs Kitchen and Bar. Watch your bracket get busted. How's everybody's brackets doing right now? Fine. I think I still have all of my... I think I still have everybody, which, got, is, which is not always the case at this point. I got like 9 or 10 Sweet 16 teams, I think. Okay. Like I'll have to... I, got, I don't... I got to count mine up here. Count, I'll count mine yeah. up in the break. Uh, so, again, whether you're a fan of the game, just looking for a good time, grab your friends, try the new MVP of sports bars in Tucson. It is Champs. Kitchen and Bar, North La Choya Boulevard, and I guess what now we can call the old Foothills Mall because it's going to be a condo complex here in the not-too-distant future. All right, it's Countdown to Tip Off. Uh, Hour number one is coming to an end. We've got much more in store for you as we get to hour number two. We are taking you up until 3 o'clock this afternoon, and then uh, the network will take over with Ryan Hansen and Brian Jeffries. They are in Los Angeles for the call of this game today, it'll be a 409 tip off between the Arizona Wildcats, the number nine team in the country, and the Clemson Tigers, who enter the Sweet 16 as an unranked team. Along with Calvin Ifan and JW Madden, I'm David Kelly. You're listening to Wildcats Radio 1290. This today's Spotlight on a Cat has been brought to you by O'Reilly Chevrolet. Get more with O'Reilly Chevrolet. This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Advanced Auto Care, Crest Insurance Group, Desert Diamond Casinos, First Chiropractic, Frog in Firkin, Kaiser Garage Doors and Gates, Picture Rocks Cooling, Heating and Plumbing, The Polston Results Team with Keller Williams, Southern Arizona, Royal GMC Buick and Cadillac, Royal Kia, Royal Jaguar Land Rover, The Window Depot. Frog and Firkin, a standout among the bars and restaurants in the University area. Frog and Firkin does what very few pubs can, combine a festive atmosphere and great beer with a menu that could stand on its own in any restaurant setting. A sports enthusiast dream with over 30 TVs, 30 beers on tap, and over 100 imported and domestic bottles. Daily drink and food specials, and the kitchen is serving until 10. A standout in the University area, Frog and Firkin. Eat local, support local. Frogandfirkin.com. Tired of dry, itchy skin? Have mineral buildup at every faucet. Ram Plumbing's affordable, green, eco-friendly water softener and alkalized purification systems are built right here in our great state of Arizona and use a fraction of the wastewater as their competitors. Want soft water, non-chlorinated, or the best alkalized drinking water? You can trust Ram Plumbing to be your one-stop shop. Ask about their Water Taste Challenge. 40th year anniversary savings, up to $500 off water systems, and $40 off any service. If your plumbing's in trouble, call Ram on the double. Most financial advisors I know have had a moment in their career where they thought, with more control, I would do things differently for my client's sake. This is Natalie Fernandez with Meridian Wealth Management, and our firm was created by advisors with the understanding that we need flexibility, control, and decision-making power to create the best experience for our clients. If you're an advisor interested in learning more about our growing firm, call me at 719-1433 to talk more today. Advisory services provided by Meridian Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Experiencing the Sonoran Desert's natural wonders comes easy at Rock and K. Nestled at the base of the Rincon Mountain foothills, enjoy stunning mountain views up close every day. Six model homes are now open to tour at Del Webb at Rock and K. Here, life is about more than just beautiful homes. It's about the experiences waiting outside your front door at this new 55 plus active adult neighborhood. LiveRockandK.com. Designed by nature, built for you. Proud U of A radio broadcast sponsor. Don't hold back. Just dive right in. This is Desert Diamond. The round, the clock, off the charts, over the top spectacle that puts a shine on any day, any time. The tables are hot to the touch. The slots are spinning winners every day. And the point spreads are yours for the taking. So go ahead. Live the diamond life. Desert Diamond Casino. Visit ddcaz.com. An enterprise of the Thana Autumn Nation. Heat and air work in a state of disrepair. 
Spring is here and so are the allergies. I'm Janae Arenas and if you're a mom like me, you're concerned about how clean the air is that your family is breathing. That's why we offer duct cleaning, AeroSeal duct sealing, and air purification. Call us at Picture Rocks Cooling at 520-440-4069. Your family deserves to breathe clean, healthy air. Picture Rocks Cooling, heating and plumbing. It's a party 100 years in the making, and all of Tucson is invited. Saturday, March 23rd, starting at 11 a.m., we'll kick off our 100-year anniversary party at O'Reilly Chevrolet. Along with a Chevy Classic Car Show, there'll be food trucks, balloon twisters, a caricature artist, and much more. Our cake-cutting ceremony will start at 5 p.m., and our price-cutting, well, that's been going on for more than a century. So put it in your cell phone for the 23rd and see us on Broadway next to Park Place Mall. Or go to O'Reilly.com for more details. O'Reilly Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Get the backyard you've always wanted with a custom pool from First Choice Pools, a backyard oasis built around you. First Choice is a full-service builder of beautiful in-ground pools and backyard designs for years of staycations. If you're ready to dive in, then visit TucsonPoolBuilder.com. Schedule now and get three months of full-service free. First Choice Pools for installs, renovation, remodeling, and repair. Get started today at TucsonPoolBuilders.com. First Choice Pools, the first and only choice. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Let's take a look at the Right Way Rundown and see what's coming up on our pregame show. Brought to you by Right Way Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Do things the right way. Arizona versus Clemson. The round of 16 of the NCAA tournament will Give you the scoreboard here coming up in this segment about the rest of the games. View from courtside will happen this hour. Don Munson is the play-by-play man for the Clemson Tigers. We'll talk some basketball with him. We'll talk some football with him. We'll talk realignment. We'll find out what he, his thoughts on that. A lot of rumors about uh, what the future of the ACC is going to be uh, coming up. And if, if that might break up. Clemson, Florida State, and some. Did of those you hear the teams. news today? I did not. A Florida State officially declared they're out. Really? Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's already happening. Already happening. Uh, pest of the game. Who will be that tiger that gets underneath the wildcat skin? Brought to you by University Termite and Pest Control. Best bets from Desert Diamond Sportsbook. This is a one fifty three over under. Under seems to have been the play in the postseason. We'll find out. If uh, that's the case again today, uh, keys to the game starting lineup. We'll give you your scouting report as well. We'll hear from both the Wildcats and the Tigers on each other and what they need to do to try to win this game today. It'll be a 409 tip off in Los Angeles at what is now known as the Crypto.com Arena, the former Staples Center, home of the Lakers and the Clippers, although the Clippers are, they're going to be moving, if I'm not mistaken, into another facility. Is that correct, J-Dub? Are the they? Clippers, yeah, 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 they are. They're. I think it's uh, almost done. Almost done. Yeah. So there you go. They'll have the facility they can finally call their own and, and not have to share anymore. One of the things that has been a topic of conversation over the course of the last week uh, has been, and really we've talked about it all season long, and that was the trip that the Wildcats took the overseas trip uh, prior to the start of the season. Uh, It was a lot of guys coming in uh, to this team uh, with uh, accolades. Uh, How would they assimilate into the group that was here and, and the freshmen as well coming in and Tommy Lloyd after last Saturday's game said that uh, it was a huge, huge bonding moment for this team. There was a moment. When we were over in Israel and Abu Dhabi, I mean, I think we all knew we had a special group. I mean, the the connection we had and, and we were able to get with each other over there and just it was really special, you know, because people were maybe questioning how we were going to be chemistry wise. And and, and and these guys are elite uh, with, with chemistry and, and, and I'm really proud of them and, and I'm just proud to be associated with them. Now, you can only take, guys, those trips every four years. So the Wildcats will not be able to do <laughs> another one until uh, 27. But. You know, probably even more critical to take a trip like that in a year when you have yeah. so many new players well, coming into it. Kelvin, a you talk about the two foreign freshmen coming in, but obviously with Caleb and Jaden and Keyshot coming in, transferring in from other schools, to me, and I would like to hear you speak on this, 
having Pella and Umar clearly with an established love for one another and being the core of the veteran leadership on this team before anybody else showed up. I mean, Kelvin, when you go to an overseas trip like that and all the things talking about being comfortable, being, you know, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable and all that stuff, that's a completely different environment, new to a lot of those guys. But with Pella and Umar leading the way, that seems like such a nice landing spot, Kelvin, for a lot of those other guys to come in and just embrace that Arizona culture. Yeah, and I and and and, and I agree with that, and I think it had a lot to do with them actually playing on the court. Uh, when you have a guys like Balo and Pella, who's not necessarily the number one and number two threat, I mean, uh, number number one and two guy on the team, it really gave guys like Keyshawn and Caleb and, and and even Boswell getting his first time to start. Get them chance to see that, like, yo, they really need us. They, they you know, you know, I, I really got a role on this team, and with just that, guys, just having a role, a real role, it makes you want to buy in even more. And so, yes, I think the trip and being over there together and actually playing the games and 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 and, and having fun playing the games that'll make you look at a guy a little bit different. And and now you get a chance to talk and all these other different things. But I I, I just really think that having that playing time available. And realizing that it was real before you got into real games where they really counted, you got a chance to see like, yo, I got a chance to make a mark on this team. I got a chance to really do something. I just got to buy into the culture. And like you said, it was being set by Balo and, and Larson, two of the most unselfish guys that you could have around. Yeah, team guys, right? Yeah, there you go. And uh, Keyshad referred to that trip as an icebreaker. The trip, I feel like the trip was a great icebreaker. You know, um, it happened in August, J- July, August, like when we was all fresh and uh, getting to know each other um, with us being like pretty much half American guys, half like, like foreign guys. Like going on that trip, we learned a lot about each other, like backgrounds, um, eth- uh, eth- ethnicities and all that stuff, um, like the wars that happened in other people's countries. So we all just gained a, a sense of what people, what, what each other been through in life and that was pretty much just the start of our journey and tommy admitted this week he was asked about it again yesterday uh, at the uh, sweet 16 media day and, and he admitted that look they, yeah we wanted it, the, the key was to get to know each other in terms of the off the court side of it but there was a science to how they wanted to approach it uh from the playing part of it as well i've traveled a lot i mean a lot and obviously, if you guys know my coaching background, I've been recruited internationally for years, and I love traveling, and I've taken my family on, you know, around-the-world trips. You know, we, we really valued, my wife and I, you know, traveling with our kids and making that part of our life. But to be able to take our team, it's the first time I've done a foreign trip. And uh, and I didn't want to just do one of these foreign trips where you go play a couple, you know, rinky-dink select teams. We wanted to go play national teams. We wanted to go to places of substance where our guys could learn. So, you know, we got the opportunity to go to Israel, and in Abu Dhabi and it was an awesome trip and and an amazing way to you know get everybody in our group we had a group of like 50 people I mean to get them connected get them out of their comfort zone and and uh, we we fully participated in everything Israel had to offer Um, and and, and it was an amazing trip and and an amazing way to kind of kick off our journey you know and especially you know in, in light of what's happening in over in that part of the country or part of the world right now you know it's a it, it was a really impactful trip for us and um, I'm hopeful you know you can do those trips every four years I'm hopeful in, in four years you know I'm, I'm optimistic that the world's going to be in a better place um, that region of the world's going to be in a much better place and, and I'm hopeful that Arizona can make a return trip over there because was I think that would be really really cool if, on, on a lot of levels yeah clearly you don't take that trip this summer <laughs> Unfortunately, no, no, no time soon. No, no time <laughs> no, for, a few, so, for a few something. For, exactly, exactly. With the, all the unfortunateness that's happening over there uh, between the Palestinians and the Hamas and, and Israel. I, I'll say this too, DK, but I've, I, J Dub, I've seen it go the other way where you got tired of guys. Yeah. Mm. You got tired of them. You, 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 know, you made me come in in July, so I had to miss my family for two months. Well, yeah. Right, yeah. This is the ideal group, right? Because you're talking, I mentioned Pella and Balo being here as the foundation, but all those guys are new. So it's like you needed, Kelvin, a little bit of extra time. If you're talking about a bunch of juniors and seniors that have been there, done that, they've already practiced hard against each other for three years, you might get sick of each other much quicker. But these are guys trying to figure each other's personalities out, right? I mean, you heard all these things about Caleb coming in. 
you, you might have not seen too much about Keyshot, who's kind of a quiet guy over there at San Diego State. But getting to know who those guys really are, Kelvin, it's so important for bonding, right, before even the season starts to have a chance just to get to just the personality style. And like Coach said, going up against national teams and actual good competition right. on top of that, just a great trip overall to be able to get those guys connected before the season starts. Well, Kelvin, you mentioned guys getting tired of each other, and I thought it was interesting the comment we heard earlier from Brad Brunell when he said, I think the season's too long mm -hmm. because it starts in September. And now you're talking about adding in an aspect like that where, I mean, you're, you're doing what? I think they're allowed 10 days of stru structured practice in, in late July before you even go on that. Now you're extending the season even further in some situations. Well, Kelvin, let me ask you a question. How hard is it to flip that switch after going so hard at your brothers because you're all fighting for playing time, you're all fighting for a spot in the rotation, and that happens for, what, four, six weeks out from the first game? Yeah. You go to switch from that into wanting to hug each other after they've done something good. I mean, you got to – that's a fine line. It's a very fine line, and you'll be surprised how many times that hug don't happen. <laughs> that hug don't happen. We just – we understand we need each other in these games, and we're going to do what we have to do. But a lot of times, man, I'll tell you guys, I, me, me and Reggie Gary. Yeah. Yeah, I, we had to get to be adults, and 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 his wife, you know, talked to me, you know, and and made me like realize, like, whoa, Kevin, chill, you yeah. know what I mean? Because Reggie was so, man, Reggie is Reggie. Yeah. I right. mean, and, and 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 it's funny, I can't even say that like that because of the, who the people know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a nice Reggie, right? You know, but Reggie at at the practice moment is. But a you beast. don't get to be the best defensive player in school history being a nice. And guy. Well, it's funny too. Animals, <laughs> the you first. Got you got yeah. the, the the freshman coming in, Kelvin, and yeah. you got the vets who are like, "Let me, I got to teach him what it's yeah. all about." And, and Kelvin's about like, that. "Don't you don't you know who I am? I already know about all this stuff, you know." So it's like you could, I could imagine you left a lot of practices, a little Hot. angry, yeah, a little angry. <laughs> Hot, yeah. Hot, you know. And and, and and you know, we had a set down and we talked, and Reggie told me he's like, "Man, you know." And Corey, we was all there, and they was, he, he basically was like, "Man, you was coming in the hot shot, coaches talking about you, you the defensive stopper, you the lockdown." When I tell you, I don't think that man talked to me the first two months I was here. <laughs> the first two months I was here. You know what I'm saying? So, so no, nah, man, yeah, yeah, man, that, that competition is real. Me and JT, me and Jason Terry, that was my little brother. But it used to be some practices. I'd be like, yo, don't touch me again. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it, it, it was just – and, 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 and Coach Olsen did that. He brought great guys in to where you had to compete at those practices to where those games would be easy. Right. And, and and when I tell you it was competitive, it was competitive. Everybody was not best friends, bro. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Anybody's laced him up. I mean, I've definitely thrown I'm about the calmest, chill guy you'll ever meet. And I've definitely thrown a ball at my best friend's head because he was like <laughs> elbowing me in the ribs or one yeah. too many times out there on the court. So it happens. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, you know, now I guess that that's a perfect understanding for why these coaches don't want to play each other in, in games, because, I mean, even on that level, there's a oh. competitiveness you know, and we and like you said, we've all done it. I can remember my best friend in high school when we first time we played summer ball against each other and had to get I had to get into the box. He was a pitcher, I had to get into the box and face him like that. You know, I wanted I wanted to hit the ball out of the ballpark. <laughs> He's still my boy. And right. you know, we were kind of joking, you know, it wasn't no animosity to it, but I wanted to get him. For sure, there was no question. First pitch behind your back, <laughs> 95 mile an hour. <laughs> Real. Well, maybe 85 and a half, but not 95. Right. He could throw. He could throw, though. Uh, and, and interestingly enough, you know, we talk about obviously the you know the guys that we, earlier were Spain, like the you know six of your eight rotation have been and played in these NCAA tournament games, and and you've got two guys that actually played in a game last year against each other. In Jaden Bradley and Keisha Johnson, when San Diego State came up against Alabama, it might have actually been in this round, the Sweet 16 round. Yep. I have to go back and double check that. But uh, Keisha this week on on how they've dealt with that from last year. Uh, we talk about it all the time, you know. All the time. Uh, sometimes you give me a hard time about it, and um, I rub it in his face, you know, a little bit. You know, uh, just... just uh, Pretty much the relationship that we all have with each other is 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 just a blessing for us all to come together. You know, Caleb uh, through the journey that he went, me and Jaden seeing each other last year. You know, Omar and Pella being on great teams, we just all talk about all these great experiences and everything. But um, going to your question about just like making any play, any play that that it takes to save the game. You know, we watch a lot of film. Um, we just, you know, you're going to have to, you, you'll see one thing on, on film, like be like, okay, that'll happen tomorrow in the game. And if I could do that to save the game, let me do that. Let me make that play. Let me dive on the floor. Let me get a deflection. Whatever the case may be, all things come in the count of March. 
All right, let's let you know what we've got going on today on the college basketball schedule. The Pac-12 scoreboard is brought to you by Mesquite Valley Growers. Mesquite Valley Growers. Real growers, real experience, real nursery. That's not going to be the Pac-12 scoreboard much longer. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, is it, is it? even without us i don't think so i think we're the only we're the only ones left standing right i think everybody else is out yeah that was in it colorado lost right yeah washington state got to the second round uh they're out oregon got beat so yeah there you go clemson and arizona will start things off of the first of the four games today uh, you've also got number one ranked UConn. Speaking of San Diego State, that'll be in the TD Garden in Boston. That'll be the second game of the day. It actually starts 30 minutes after our game. So you'll have uh, the two games in the uh, early sessions and the two games in the night sessions crossing over. 639 official, uh, unofficial tip off of the second game in Los Angeles. Number four seed Alabama, number one seed North Carolina. And then the night game in Boston will be third seed Illinois against the two seed Iowa. Those are your eight teams in the Sweet 16 tonight. The eight teams in the Sweet 16 tomorrow, uh, 11th seed North Carolina State, the only double digit seed, will face Marquette. That'll be at, in Dallas, Texas, in the American Airlines Center. Uh, after that will be Gonzaga and Purdue. That'll be the first game in Detroit at the Little Caesars Arena. Gonzaga, the fifth seed, Purdue, the one. And then the second game in Dallas will be fourth seed Duke against number one Houston. That should be a really good ball game. The nightcap in Detroit will be number two seed Tennessee, the Volunteers, against the Creighton Bulldogs. And guys, very interesting uh, when you look at this now. The Wildcats uh, are the number two seed uh, in the West region. Uh, and we don't obviously want to look too far ahead of ourselves, but uh, they could potentially face the number one seed uh, in North Carolina in, on Saturday uh, for a chance to get to the final four. And then there's a very real possibility if they get to the final four, they could face two more number one seeds. Yeah. And it, it, now you'll remember what happened in 1997. Yeah. yeah. They beat three number one seeds on the way they beat to the national championship. Three number one seeds that were, at the time, the three winningest programs in college basketball. Yeah. Kansas, Kentucky, North Carolina. Most wins, top three wins of any team, and also number one seeds in that tournament. And yeah. that's what made it so sweet. Yep. It's a national championship, but you add that to it, and it makes it just sweet. And these guys would love the same opportunity. You don't want to knock, knock. I mean, you'll take it however you get it. That's not to say that. But you don't want it to be a 16 seed and a Cinderella and all that. No, I want to play against the best. I've been saying that forever. So, you know, that's not a gimmick. That's real. I want to beat the best so I can be the real national champion. The one, uh, the I'm sorry, the West is aligned with the East. So, just looking ahead, that first number one seed would be UConn. UConn so, you'd have to. To oh, beat the yes. best team in the tournament. Yes. <laughs> in the, because if you lose, right. you lost to the champion. Exactly. Come on. I'm, I'm, come on. Let me. And now I can. Uh, that gives Lloyd and the staff a chance to see what else they need. Mm -hmm. once, you, once you get in that position where you're playing in a championship game, now you can figure out okay, I need a bigger guy. I need more shooting. I need some tougher guy. Whatever. I mean, we got tougher this year. Right. right? You see what he did? He got tougher and more athletic this year. Right, and now you, if you can get to now, you're gonna learn from this Sweet 16 game what you need now. Do you need to get older? Because you're playing an older team today. Do you need to get older? And so those are things you you you, you get to um, figure out when you play these games. And then of course the other side would have uh, Houston and Purdue potentially would be uh, the third number one seed if you got to that championship game on April the 8th, Monday, April the 8th, in Phoenix. Going to be fun over the course of the next week. Well, got to get to, through tonight first. Let's try to do that. All right, it is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show. And it is also brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the best place to eat, drink, and play while watching today's game between the Wildcats and the Clemson Tigers. Where are you watching the game today? Let us know. 520-848-1290. Call us, text us, tweet us at Wildcats1290. 
Facebook us at Wildcats Radio 1290. You can also go to our app and you can uh, just kind of uh, interact with us there. You can send us a text on our app. You can send us audio on our app. You can send us video on our app. Uh, really Mysterious is watching the show on YouTube. Uh, really Mysterious says Clemson will have them on the ropes and will be up at the start of the, well, there's no third quarter. So second half, I'm assuming Real Mysterious means, but Arizona will win by 12. Uh, Real Mysterious also saying UConn will win by 16, UNC by 13 over Alabama, and Iowa State by 5 over Illinois. Real Mysterious, we appreciate you checking in and watching the show on Facebook. All right, coming up next, it's going to be your scouting report. We'll talk to the voice of the Clemson Tigers, Don Munson, but for right now, that is your scoreboard. That's been the Pac-12 Scoreboard, brought to you by Mesquite Valley Growers. Mesquite Valley Growers. Real growers, real experience, real nursery. This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Blue Whale Car Wash, Caruso's Italian Restaurant, Cool Willie's Air and Plumbing, The Diamond Store, Goldberg and Osborne, Goodfellas AC, Humane Society of Southern Arizona, Lexus of Tucson, Nova Home Loans, Recon Auto Detail, Right Now Power Sports Tucson, Tucson Police Department. Southern Arizona Radiology Associates have been dedicated to providing superior images and quality care for the last 35 years. They're the one you trust when you need an x-ray, CT scan, ultrasound, mammogram, or MRI. They have locations in Tucson, Green Valley, and Sierra Vista. Ask your doctor to refer you to Southern Arizona Radiology Associates today. That's Southern Arizona Radiology Associates. Visit their website at sararadiology.com or call 520-335-6849 for more information. Sean Furrier for Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care. Spring is on its way, and we all know that extreme heat comes next. Right now is the time to get your car or truck road trip ready. And with 14 convenient locations, six decades of service, and dozens of top shop awards, Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care is the place. This month, get back big rebates on all your favorite major brand tires. Save more on the most affordable, long-lasting tires. Check out jackfurriers.com for details and money-saving coupons. Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care. Here to get you there. Honey, our yard's full of weeds. Looks like a jungle and the neighbors are complaining. I know, I know. I'm trying to get rid of them, but the product I'm using, it doesn't work. Oh. Not to mention, I don't have the time. But it's not just weeds. It's not? No, I'm seeing ants. Ants? Yeah, and spiders. Ooh, spiders. I know, and I think I saw a scorpion. No way! Yes way, and there's a pet rat in our garage. <laughs> okay, I'll call University Termite and Pest Control today. We'll get rid of all of them. Okay, honey, thank you. University Termite and Pest Control, locally owned. Find them online at bepestfree.com. Cool Willie's Air and Plumbing. Always trust the big guy. Mention your Wildcats and receive $50 off any repair at CoolWillies.com. Cool Willie's is proud to be a partner of the University of Arizona Wildcats basketball radio broadcast. Two powerful teams working hard for you to get the job done right every day. Cool Willie's Air and Plumbing. Big enough to help, small enough to care. Remember to mention your Wildcats and receive $50 off any repair. CoolWillies.com. The Window Depot is more than a window store. The Window Depot is a one-stop warehouse with everything you need for your complete home remodel. Shop the aisles of pre-built cabinets in a variety of colors, granite and quartz countertops, sinks, skylights, and hardware to complete your project. Need a custom order? We can help. Our designers offer free design services and can special order everything you need for your kitchen or bathroom remodel today. Shop thewindowdepot.com or find a location near you. The Window Depot, more than a window store. Hi, this is Joe Parsons, President and CEO of Parsons Steel and proud member of the Advisory Business Council of Meridian Wealth Management. As a longtime Tucsonan, professional rodeo cowboy and businessman, I live my life on several core values and principles. Keep your promises, finish what you start. There's a line between right and wrong and nothing in between. Natalie Fernandez and her team at Meridian share those core values, and I'm very proud to know them. To learn more about Meridian, call 719-1433. Advisory services provided by Meridian Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Desperate buyers have created tremendous opportunity for sellers. If you've had the slightest thought of selling your home, it's time to call Sean Poston with the Poston Results Team at Keller Williams, Southern Arizona. Why choose the Poston Results Team? Past performance, more money in your pocket, over a 65% referral rate, an incredible Poston Results team staff, and most important, 
communication because you and your home matter. The Polson Results Team. When buying and selling really mattered, go to TucsonHomeValues.com. That's TucsonHomeValues with an S dot com. Hi, this is Mary with Mesquite Valley Growers. Mesquite Valley Growers has the largest selection when it comes to picking out gifts of living, plants, flowers, trees, and cactus. Indoor, outdoor for your home, your apartment, living gifts can go just about anywhere. Green, green, green plants of every size to create beautiful spaces indoors. And if you can't decide, you can always give a gift card. Mesquite Valley Growers on Speedway just east of Pantano. Open seven days a week. Give the gift of living all year round with Mesquite Valley Growers. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. It's time now to take you down the front row of the arena. A view from courtside is brought to you by Kaiser Garage Door and Gates. Kaiser, celebrating 25 years serving Southern Arizona. And for our scouting report today on the Clemson Tigers, pleased to be joined by the voice of Clemson basketball, Don Munson. The Tigers entering this game at 23 and 11 against the Arizona Wildcats, coming off uh, a berth in the Sweet 16 with victories over New Mexico and uh, Baylor. And and it's it's always interesting, Don. We talk about you know, teams having momentum and that kind of thing. How how you looking going into the tournament? Uh, the Wildcats lost two of their last three games coming in uh, and, and were bounced in, the, in this semifinal run of the Pac-12. And, you know, our whole fan base is freaking out. I can't imagine that Clemson's fan base was real happy losing three out of four uh, coming into the tournament. But both teams are sitting in the Sweet 16 right now. And that's all that's important. I mean, it really, it really is. Sometimes, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing maybe to taste, a, have a little bit of disappointment as you come into the NCAA tournament. But I think that just drives your players even more. I, I know that you want to win a conference tournament. I, I get that. But, you know, if you're not able to win a conference tournament and you haven't been playing your best going into a conference tournament, sometimes just to have a week off, and let your coaches, you know, really start fine-tuning, maybe break them down a little bit, build them back up. I think that's a good thing. I, I think it's been positive for Clemson. And just from an outsider looking in, I think it's been positive for Arizona. Uh, Brad Brownwell, kind of give me an indication. Obviously, he's, uh, you know, he's had some success with this program. Uh, you know, he's coached at a number of players, uh, UNC Wilmington, Wright State, before he got – uh, to, to Clemson, uh, how has he kind of shaped this now? And I think he went going on almost 14 seasons. Yeah, he's done a really nice job of just building his program. And he, he's done it. Has he used the transfer portal? Yes, he's used the transfer portal. But he's also been very good at getting young men to come here and then stay on campus three or four years and develop themselves as players. That's, that's certainly the, the case with Ian Shefflin. It's the case with T.J. Hall. That's the case with Chase Hunter. And those three, obviously, are going to have to play very well uh, today if they're going to have a chance to knock off the Wildcats. All right, well, let's start with P.J. Hall. Uh, is he, is, I guess, is he your kind of typical stretch four, you know, a guy that can, can score inside but can also step out and, and take the three and, and cause some havoc defensively as well uh, as a shot blocker? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to play more at the five spot. So he's, you know, he's going to play certainly more inside. But he's he likes to operate inside. He likes to play in that low block. But yes, he's he has that little bit. And I'm going to go in the way back machine. He's got a little Bill Lambeer in him where he can step out and hit that hit that three. Uh, but he's but he is a guy that that can get it done low. And I think that becomes a big key is how much can he draw the defensive presence of Arizona's bigs out and give maybe some space offensively for Clemson in the paint to, for them to utilize. All right, so if he steps out, then who are some of those other guys that, that can score inside? Well, Shefflin is definitely one of them. He isn't a guy that, uh, that definitely is, likes to get the ball in the low block, back you down, and then you know just try to go to work, although Ian can step out and, and hit an occasional three for you as well. Jack Clark is, is a guy, probably more of a wing player. Chauncey Wiggins would be another name. You know, Chauncey stands at, at 6'10", but maybe a little bit slender, doesn't doesn't necessarily like the physical makeup of stuff, but certainly can go down there and play. But but when it comes to low block presence, it's going to be mostly Hall and Shefflin. 
Don Munson is our guest, giving you your scouting reports, the, the voice of the Clemson Tigers, and his presence is brought to you by Ram Plumbing. When your plumbing is in trouble, uh, call Ram on the double. In terms of Joseph Gerard III, uh, ACC honorable mention, All-American, a third uh, all-time in ACC history, and in three-point shooters, uh, three-pointers made. Is that kind of his game? What other assets, aspects of his game uh, it causes trouble for defenses? Well, yeah, he's he's definitely the long-range threat. Uh, there's there's no doubt about that. The thing that we've seen Joseph though do here as of late is maybe ball faking and and not being afraid to penetrate and taking the mid-range jumper, you know, shooting that jumper from 14 to to 18 feet. Uh, And you don't want to foul him. I mean, you just absolutely do not want to want to foul him. If if you get him to the line, then he's going to, he's going to create points there. The other thing with Joseph that has really, I think, kind of popped some people's eyes has been his rebounding ability. I mean, you you look at a guy that's six foot, you don't think about him as, as necessarily being a guy that's going to go grab boards for you from the guard spot, but he's been able to do that as well. I, I, interestingly enough, this is a team that at times has been able to, you know, we always look in te- terms of, uh, you know, teams that shoot threes because that's an issue that the Wildcats have had defending those types of teams. You guys have had a lot of games where you shoot into double digits uh, as a team and made three-pointers. Uh, that, that Those numbers have gone down. Have you guys found it, or has, has, has Brunel found it harder offensively uh, to, to get open threes in, in the latter stages of the season, particularly in the postseason? Uh, I don't think he's found it that much more difficult. I don't think that he has stressed it as much. We haven't taken, you know, I wouldn't say we've taken an, an extraordinarily large amount of threes as, as maybe we've seen like, like Baylor, for instance, in their first game of uh, the regional in Memphis, they took 30. Now, they made 16 of them. Uh, so, you know, that certainly helped them in their blowout win over, over Colgate. But this is a Clemson team that probably, you know, when they're at their best, they're like 8 of 18 from outside the arc, and then they get, get score points in other manners. But the, the real thing that has carried Clemson has been their defense. When they hold, if they can hold an opponent to less than 40% shooting, then Clemson's going to win. I mean, they just, they just are. This today's game is really simple. Who shoots the ball well? Who who shoots the ball well? Whoever shoots the ball well is going to prevail in this thing. Talking to Don Munson, the voice of the Clemson Tigers. You mentioned Ian Shefflin a little bit earlier. He was voted most improved in the ACC. Where did he make the biggest jumps in his game from from last season to this season? Well, I don't think that you know offensively uh, his numbers uh, have gone up. You know almost. Double uh, from what he where he was last year, and then you know, take a look at what he's also doing on, on the glass as well. I mean, he's, he's averaging almost nine and a half points and averaging almost nine and a half rebounds a contest. You don't see very many of those guys in the collegiate game that are that are able to do those things. So that's where he has really improved uh, the most. Is offensive numbers have come up, but uh, but so have have the rebounding numbers as well. We're talking with Don Munson. He is the voice of the Clemson Tigers. It's your scouting report brought to you by Ram Plumbing. When your plumbing is in trouble, uh, call Ram on the double. Uh, uh, Don, you guys come out of, obviously, the impressive ACC conference. Uh, historically, uh, always uh, with teams in the Sweet 16. What is it like, kind of, what's, what's, what's it been like uh, kind of going up against the Dukes and the North Carolinas uh, on an annual ba- basis, multiple times on an annual basis, and you look at the success that you know Miami has had down there as well. Uh, what's kind of that experience been for Clemson battling in the ACC? Well, this is, this is my 30th year here, here at Clemson, and I can tell you in those 30 years, you know, certainly Duke and North Carolina have, have carried the banner, but like you said, there, there have been other clubs also that have, you know, obviously Virginia, uh, has yeah. been extraordinarily good, winning a national championship not that long ago. Syracuse has made a run to the Sweet 16. Florida State uh, had just a tremendous run in ACC or in NCAA tournaments uh, as well, and won an ACC championship. Notre Dame won a won an ACC championship uh, not that long ago. So it hasn't just been those two schools. There's always seems to be four, five, six, seven schools every year that play at a really high level, and that certainly has been the, the case here in 2023-24. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, we were talking on our on our local show a few days ago just about the coaching carousel and 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 I was talking about uh uh you know uh 
the the new coach at at, at Vanderbilt, uh, Mark Byington, and and how I'd had a chance to to see him play back when I spent some time in Wilmington, North Carolina, in the mid in the mid nineties, and and I was um, remarking about how he was one of the best players on that team. Well, the other great player on that team is also on the Clemson staff, Bill, Billy Donlin, who's been a head coach. Yep. What's he added to uh, to to Brownell's staff? Well, you know, Billy is a guy that's that's kind of the defensive guru for us, and uh, so it's it's funny, you know, you take a look at every staff. It seems like it's like football. Every staff has an <laughs> offensive coordinator, and every staff has a has a defensive coordinator. So Billy's been the defensive side of things, but. He and Brad obviously go way, way back, know each other extraordinarily well. There's just a comfort level there, uh, but Billy's been a big, big plus. I, I got to talk some football with you. Uh, what, what's what's, what's going to be the future of the ACC? Obviously, things, you know, we're starting to hear a lot of rumors about, uh, you know, we you know what happened on our side with the breakup of the Pac-12 and the Wildcats moving on to the Big 12, and now we're starting to hear rumblings about, you know, the ACC being maybe the next conference to, to fall apart. Do you have any ideas of, or thoughts about what, what might be next for that conference? That's above my pay grade. I, I just call the games. I don't make the decision uh, for what's going on. So, you know, whatever happens is, is going to happen. But it's going to happen. I'm just telling you. I mean, uh, if you don't think that uh, – here's what I will tell you. In the next three to five years, there's going to be a group of schools that are going to split off from the NCAA. They're going to form their own governance body. They're going to have their own, own championships. That's going to be a group of about 48 to 64 schools. Uh, that are going to do that. If you don't think that's coming, then I think you're absolutely blind. Mm. Yeah. What's what's your, what's uh, kind of been fun about being a part of that program with Dabo and the way he's built it up? Oh, it's. I mean, that's why this is the best job on campus. Is what I is what I have because I, you know, I get to work with not only great coaches like Coach Brownell, but but also with Coach Sweeney and uh, Coach Backage with our baseball program, who has the team number one in the country in one poll and uh, number two or three and. Uh, in the other polls, and you know, gymnastics, the women's sports here have been fantastic. Our soccer team just come off a, a national championship. I mean, what what Clemson is doing athletically right now, uh, not just in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but also nationally, is has been just a ton of fun to be able to to watch, to be a part of, and certainly to call. All right, uh, Don Munson, Don, give us a few keys to Clemson getting a win over Arizona. Well, the biggest key is they got to stop Arizona in transition. They, they can't let Arizona just get out and run. We know Caleb Love. I mean, Clemson's played against Caleb Love when he was, when he was wearing, as I like to call it, the Citadel Blue. You're in South Carolina, so we're going to call it Citadel Blue. We're not going to call it the other blue. Uh, so we know everything about Caleb Love. Uh, then I think the other, the other thing is, is that Hall, Shefflin, they're going to have to be able to make some outside shots to draw that defensive presence that Arizona wants to have down low with the bigs, draw them out a little bit, make them uncomfortable, and then use use those passing lanes to their advantage. All right, Don, hey, we appreciate you taking a few minutes to join us. Have a great call today. All right, appreciate it. Go Tigers. Don Munson, the voice of the Clemson Tigers, with your scouting report. We hope you enjoyed your view from Courtside. It was brought to you by Kaiser Garage Door and Gates. Kaiser, celebrating 25 years serving Southern Arizona. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Experiencing the natural wonders comes easy at Rock and K. Nestled at the base of the Rincon Mountain foothills, enjoy stunning mountain views up close every day. Hit the community trails, explore local parks like Saguaro National and Colossal Cave, and mingle at private Diamond Community Park events. In the top-rated Vail School District, Rock and K is close to work, shopping, and services. Tour 11 different model homes by top-tier builders, offering move-in ready homes and special incentives. LiveRockandK.com. Designed by nature, proud U of A radio broadcast sponsor. Old Pueblo Harley-Davidson is the pre-owned inventory destination. With hundreds of pre-owned Harley-Davidson motorcycles to choose from, save two or even $6,000 at Old Pueblo Harley's pre-owned clearance sale. Now through the end of the month, Old Pueblo is accepting 100% of all credit applications with low financing options available. Take a test ride and receive a free dealer tee only at Old Pueblo Harley-Davidson or online at oldpuebloharley.com. Some restrictions may apply. See dealer for details. 
Mineral Buildup at every faucet. Ram Plumbing's affordable green, eco-friendly water softener and alkalized purification systems are built right here in our great state of Arizona and use a fraction of the wastewater as their competitors. Want soft water, non-chlorinated, or the best alkalized drinking water? You can trust Ram Plumbing to be your one-stop shop. Ask about their Water Taste Challenge. 40th year anniversary savings, up to $500 off water systems and $40 off any service. If your plumbing's in trouble, call Ram on the Double. Day in and day out, we're inundated with commercials asking to review your portfolio or telling you to get a second opinion. This is Natalie Fernandez with Meridian Wealth Management, and I want to share the advice I give people every day. Talk to three different advisors at three different firms. It's important to understand their differences and find someone you can trust. I want Meridian to be one of your three, and then you will decide who is best for you. To learn more, call us at 719-1433 today. Advisory services provided by Meridian Wealth Management, a investment advisor. Fun for the crew, fun for the family, fun for everyone. Dave and Buster's is the place to be for all things fun. With hundreds of awesome games, massive screens showing every single game, and their incredible menu of top-notch food and drinks. There's no better place to eat, drink, play, and watch than Dave and Buster's. Make Wednesday the highlight of your week at Dave and Buster's by experiencing half-price games on Wednesdays. That's right, every arcade game half-price. Dave and Buster's at Tucson Marketplace, your Wednesday game day viewing spot. Do you often worry you left the garage door open? With a LiftMaster garage door opener powered by MyQ, you'll never worry again. You can control, secure, and monitor your garage from your smartphone anytime from anywhere through the MyQ app. As an authorized LiftMaster dealer, we have smart openers designed for your needs, including belt drive motors for ultra-quiet operation, integrated camera for live video streaming, and battery backup that lets you in when the power is out. Kaiser Garage Doors and Gates is your authorized local LiftMaster dealer. Visit KaiserDoor.com for more information. Coach Tommy Lloyd here. When I need a winning strategy for my team, nothing beats knowledge and skill. That's why I recommend Rightway Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing for all your home service needs. Having personally witnessed the impact of hard work and dedication, Rightway brings the same commitment to your home's comfort. Whether it's HVAC, plumbing, or electrical, their team always delivers excellence. With a legacy of quality service since 1959, you know you're in good hands. So give your home the best. Choose Rightway Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Call or text 520-640-CATS or visit rightwayac.com. Does it feel like the price of everything is going up, up, up? We can't control the price of gas or groceries, but at Royal Buick GMC, we never add market adjustments, even while other dealers add fees because inventory is limited. At Royal Buick GMC, you can rest assured you won't pay market adjustments, and we stand by our transparent online pricing. Royal Buick GMC, the dealership that's different. OAC plus tax, title, license, dealer installed options, and 529 dock fee. Royal Buick GMC, in the Auto Mall and at RoyalTucson.com. The Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show continues on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Boswell stops. He's open. He'll take the three. It's off the mark. No good. Rebound stolen away by K.J. Lewis. Played by K. Slaps it to Love down the baseline. Fired out to Boswell. Back to Love right side. He'll shoot the three from the right wing. Got it! Oh, what a sequence there for the Cats. They're going to need a lot of great sequences today in Los Angeles. Arizona Clemson and the Sweet 16 for the right to go to the Elite Eight. The Wildcats have not been to the Elite Eight in nine years. Uh, so looking for that opportunity to take a step closer to the Final Four, which will be in Phoenix next weekend. National semifinals on Saturday the 6th and then the National Championship game on the 8th of uh, April, which will be a Monday. So uh, it's only—it's been seven years since the last time the Final Four was here. I actually went. That's the first time I've ever been to a final. I didn't go to the semifinals, but I did go up for the finals. I believe it was Gonzaga and uh, Gonzaga and North Carolina. Is that who North Carolina beat that year? Uh, that they won it in Phoenix, I believe. So Tommy Lloyd would have been on the bench that night in Phoenix for that particular Final Four. 520-848-1290, 520-848-1290. If you'd like to get in on the program today, Keisha Johnson and Pella Larson met the media yesterday. Keisha uh, spoke about uh, conversations he's had with the Wildcats about what it takes to make a deep run into the NCAA tournament. Uh, all of us have these conversations every day, you know, just um, first of all, thanking God for the journey that we've been on, you know, having the experience of getting past the Sweet 16, making it to the national, uh, national stage and all that. 
But um, we talk about it every day. We know it's going to take everything, you know, faith, luck, um, just trust, um, and also discipline, um, sacrifices, you know, the list goes on and on. Everything comes comes into play when it comes to March and April. So, um, you know, it's not it's not just one thing we can just put our eye on. We got to take into account all things. Indeed, that is so true. You got to be uh, have your be mindful of everything that could come your way in situations like this. Uh, Pella Larson, I mentioned last year, took the loss to Princeton as, as badly as anyone, uh, and he is now facing uh, the prospects of reaching his first Elite Eight. I uh, just very excited to be here. First of all, uh, <clears throat> I think if you're not excited to be in the March Madness, you're doing something wrong. So we're all very excited. Uh, we were excited the first game. We're excited now. It, nothing's really changed. It's just uh, another uh, <clears throat> chance to prove ourselves and what we can do. And uh, yeah, we're just really excited for tomorrow. You know, Kelvin, uh, we had this conversation on the afternoon show last week. You heard uh, Pella Larson say there, uh, "How can you not get excited about the March Madness?" And and I, I I did a story when I was in TV a few years ago when a lot of these guys first got here. And we had kind of the influx in Tommy Lloyd's first season of a lot of international players. And I thought it was really interesting that, you know, that's how they refer to this. We refer to it as the, the NCAA tournament. We refer to the entire month as March Madness. But they refer to the event as the March Madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, it, it, and, and I thought they were having a little trouble understanding how important it was, right. you know, to everybody about, you know, March Madness or whatnot, because, you know, over in a lot of the countries over there, they have a lot of tournaments, mm. you, you know, as far as in their play. So, you know, I, I think it, it, you know, took a little adjustment time for some of those guys to understand how important and how physical and the different style of play it was going to be. And it was just weird for me to hear, like, Every one of them, I think I talked to Mather in that year. We talked to, to Coloco. We talked to Pella. We talked to Kerr. And to like almost to a uniformity, they all refer to it as the March Madness. And I'd never heard that before. I was like, wow, that's really weird that that's how. And it was just it was all the international guys referring to it as that. You know, we have our terms, the big dance and, you know, the tournament and that kind of thing. But for them, it's. The March Madness. I love how they put the the in front of it and kind of, you know, gives their own little spin onto what this month of basketball uh, is all about. Tommy Lloyd believes that he's got a team in this Arizona Wildcats group that is very poised uh, to play basketball at this time of year. I mean, I love our poise. We, it's something we talk about all the time. You know, you know, I mean, poise is, is built from confidence and belief. And, and I think we have those two things. Um, you know, but you're right. This tournament tests it. This tournament tests it. And, and, and one of the, you know, the, the, the crazy things about these tests is you don't always know what the response is going to be. I mean, you, you can have an idea and, and, and I, I trust our poise. I trust our belief and confidence, but, you know, that doesn't mean that it's always going to, going to, going to show up in the moments you need it to. And, and, and that's, that's what makes these games, I guess, such a spectacle. And guys, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think today and tomorrow, just because, uh, you know, UConn didn't really get tested last week. Uh, Purdue didn't really get tested that last week. Houston did go into overtime against Texas A&M. The Wildcats were, you know, were in two fights that, that they had to play. It's going to be interesting to kind of see, you know, how how maybe UConn and Purdue handle it, handle now this week uh, since they had it so easy last week. I, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you play who – you know, who you scheduled to play. So you're not in control of that. And, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what game plans and, and that the other team come with, you know, to stop the players that they have. But it's, it's just basketball, man. It's just basketball. And whatever team is playing the best that day is going to win. I mean, whatever guy shows up that day is going to win. That's just it's that simple, I believe. And uh, Pella on the poise of this team. Carry the ball. Yeah, I think the poise uh, at times is really good with our team. And uh, at times we've turned the ball over a little bit too much and allowed other teams to get back in the game. Uh, and having possession of the ball is huge in tournaments like this. We only have one game, win or go home. So uh, the poise is going to be a big key. And when we take care of the ball, I don't think there's a lot of teams that can uh, uh, defend what we do on the offensive end. 
And Keyshot Johnson uh, is a guy that has been, as we've mentioned, uh, has been to the national championship game. He's been into uh, the Final Four. And really this week kind of just talked about, uh, you know, what it takes at this time of year to navigate uh, this road and, and what he's learned from the postseason experiences that he's had. To what I learned the most is just do whatever it takes, you know, make your sacrifice, you know, try to make the game easier on your teammates, whether it's uh, Pella getting a jump stop and he's kind of trapped. If I back could and I could give him a, a release, you know, a, a bailout, you know, just try to make the game easier on your teammates, do whatever it takes. Don't really worry about the numbers. That's, um, that's, that's like, uh, that's me problems, you know. It's bigger than me when it comes to March. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, you know, what can you do to to help your teammate is what's key at this time of year. Man, that's uh, you know, and one of the things is is so beautiful. Every time I hear Keisha talk, and 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 you you hear him talking that the other guys are listening and want to know about that experience, about you know, playing in those tournaments, the Boswells, the KJ Lewis, and the Jaden Bradley. And, and when I just think of the names of the guys, and I've been around them a little bit, I know they're listening. I know they're asking questions, and it's huge having guys that that have participated in the big game. Uh, uh, you said the big, the big dance, then the big game. Mm. You know, having those guys that have had that and the disappointment of that. Right. And you can tell those guys about that disappointment and how they want to feel that and, and how you want to get back to that type of game. So I just think the, the leadership of these guys that they have and, uh, 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 you know, together is, is just, you know, a nice little unique situation for a group of guys that just, you know, basically came together. Keisha Johnson has been one of the better defenders on this team this season. Uh, he was a, a member of the Pac-12 all defensive team. Uh, this past year, honorable mention, Pac-12 all-defensive team. Tommy Lloyd feels like uh, maybe his defense is a little underrated. He's been tremendous. I mean, his his toughness and versatility and effort he gives on the defensive end are are, are almost second to none. You know, and I, and, and I don't, you know, we're, we're a team with a lot of good players, you know, who scores a lot of points, and, and I think a lot of attention gets focused on that and, and maybe you know his impact on the defensive end just gets lost in the shuffle um but but not on me i mean that dude is a bad boy and and he gives it everything he's got every possession and uh and and so you know he's really really helped us at that end of the floor he's helped you know kind of grow our identity there and uh and you know i, I don't even know I, I don't think he was even first team all conference defense you know which is crazy you know i mean like i mean i wow it, 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 trust me, any coach in our conference or any coach in the country that had Keisha Johnson on their team would value what he brings in the defensive end. And he's, he's uh, I mean, to me, he might not be all Pac-12 first-team defense, but he's, he's definitely all first-team, all-American, all-defense, in my opinion. J-Deb, what stands out about what, uh, what Keisha does at the defensive end? He's just so versatile. I mean, you look at his frame, 6'8", you know, about 225, 230, really bouncy, really good footwork. And it's really at this level all about anticipating. But, but Kelvin, when you've got the athleticism to back up the intelligence on that side of the ball, mm. I mean, he may not have the stats. And I think that's the raw stats is what you're looking at for that first mm. team. And it's because there's a lot of other guys getting boards on this team. Very, very – one of the two or three best rebounding teams in the entire country. So his numbers, around six per game, might not jump off the page. One steal per game, less than a block per game. But again, if you look at his on-ball defense and ability to switch off onto a quicker player and then maybe get down in the post, you saw him, the small ball five situation, Kelvin. To me, it's just straight-up versatility. Yes, 100% versatility. And I'm going to tell you the other thing. He's always in the right defensive position. Mm, he's, his rotations are beautiful. It, I mean, I, I know that's probably one of the main reasons why he started from the beginning of the year. He's always in the right place. He's always rotating, helping. I thought early in the year he was overhelping. Remember when he was doubling yeah. and, you know, coming? But he was just trying to do everything that was asked of him, following the game plan. You've heard him say it many a times. And I told you guys, I said, sometimes – Doing the game, you got to adjust that game plan individually. You know what I mean? I got to understand it. Like, I can't double away on the shooter because this guy has knocked down two threes. And I'll talk to you about that on the sideline, Coach, whether once we either get a timeout or you take me out because I'm not doing what you asked me to do at that moment. But I'm going to tell you then, hey, Coach, he just hit two threes. I understand what's going on there, but I'm trying to 
make sure that, you know, we don't get this reputation of a team that can't go our three-point shooting. And just to bring it back to what we were just talking about is poise, right? So poise to me is just a combination of experience at this level, right? And willingness to get better and understand your craft. And so you look at a guy like Keyshawn, it's really easy for a casual fan to look at three free throws with no time left on the clock after getting fouled by a three-point sh- shooting a three-point shot. And you're down by two, Kelvin. You got to make all three free throws to win that game. That's poise. But knowing when to come off your man in a help position because it's late in the game and somebody's trying to get to the hole, and that's not your responsibility, but you just determine in that split second, Keyshawn's got all of that poise yeah. on that end of the ball, understanding and the experience of knowing where to be, like Kelvin said, right place, right time. On top of his athleticism, that's defensive poise. He and Pella. Those two guys together, just so versatile and so much so much ability to understand what the other team's trying to do. And I have one more quick thing. And he has offensive poise. I'm going to take your word. He has offensive poise because you never see him in a situation where it, it seems like he's trying to look for his own or, you know, he needs this many shots or he has to take threes and everything like that. He's he's for sure, if you 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 uh you look at the offense, to me, he's the most unselfish guy there. I mean, Pella right there too. But those guys were uh, willing. He came from San Diego State being the most un, one of the most unselfish guys to help them get to a championship. And he's, he's the same over here. He's not trying to shoot a 1,000 threes to prove to the NBA that he can shoot threes. He's, I'm definitely going to take them to show that I can shoot them because that's one of the things we talked about in coming here. But you don't see him taking a ball full court, shooting three-pointers. Uh, 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 all of them are catching shoots, right? He right. and Pella shoot open looks. They pass if they're covered. Mm-hmm. Right. That's so, simple. Offensive poise. I had to take that from you. All right, let's find out who that tiger might be that'll get underneath the Wildcat skin today. Who is today's Pest of the Game? The Pest of the Game is brought to you by University Turbine and Pest Control. Check them out at BePestFree.com. All right, Pest of the Game. I'll go first on this one. I think I know who J-Dub is going to pick, so I'm going to beat him to it. <laughs> I'm going to go with Ian Shefflin. Uh, he's just kind of the do-everything do guy. He can score. He can grab boards. Uh, he can get you some steals and some blocks. He can pass the ball well. Uh, he is just a guy that has really elevated his game for this team and a large reason why they are where they are playing the Arizona Wildcats today. Ian Shefflin, a 6'8 junior out of Loganville, Georgia. That's my pass of the game. Yeah, he's tough. Calvin? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was so since you took my guy. I guess we <laughs> I all took were, Kelvin's since guy. We okay. All, the same, all right. <laughs> we, we, we were all the, thinking the same thing there. I'm gonna go with Joe Gerard. Uh, the 99. We we have problems with three point shooters. Mm. We have had problems with three point shooters, and, I, and you know, so I'm. He's made 99 out of 240. He's a guy that's not afraid to take that shot. Similar to K, him and Caleb Love got the kind of similar numbers, so that lets you know he's a guy that, you know, get, uh, get off those three balls. So I think he's a guy that we have to really watch. And 97 assists. Mm-hmm. So he can pass the ball and knock down a three. He's a guy we have to, uh, you know, keep keep our eyes on. Yeah, I think there's four guys you could put in this category today. I think uh, Ian's great. I think Gerard, great choice. Just so much experience. The other guy I think is the obvious choice that I'll go with is Chase Hunter just because he's on such a hot streak. Uh, But fifth-year guards, you know, guys with so much experience, uh, I think them along with P.J. Hall, I think any of those four guys you can pick because all four of those guys are going to have such a huge impact. And if any one of them gets going, as we know at this level, inspires confidence in their teammates, shots that that rim, Kelvin, starts looking a little bit bigger. Uh, So any of those guys, you let them get off and do what they're doing, it's going to be a long night. So I'll go with uh, Chase Hunter. Definitely been shooting it well. Big scoring numbers the last few games. Uh, You don't want to leave that guy open. All right. Those are your pests of the game. That's today's pest of the game. The pest of the game is brought to you by University Termite and Pest Control. Visit BePestFree.com. This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Blue Whale Car Wash, Caruso's Italian Restaurant, Cool Willie's Air and Plumbing, The Diamond Store, Goldberg and Osborne, Goodfellas AC, Humane Society of Southern Arizona, Lexus of Tucson, Nova Home Loans, Recon Auto Detail, Right Now Power Sports Tucson, Tucson Police Department. 
At Standard Restaurant Supply, their vision and number one goal is to improve the lives of their customers and clients by providing a better culinary experience. Standard Restaurant Supply, if it's in a restaurant and not food, they have it. Open to the public, no membership fees, and they offer bulk store pricing without the bulk store purchase. Open Monday through Saturday at 601 South Cherry Avenue or call 885-2345. Standard Restaurant Supply is a proud sponsor of the U of A Radio Sports Broadcast. As Arizona's leading personal injury law firm for more than 30 years, Goldberg and Osborne agrees. Bear down, Arizona, with offices statewide, including five in Tucson and Southern Arizona. The Eagle gives you home court advantage. More than 1,800 five-star Google reviews prove Goldberg and Osborne makes the right play in any situation. So, after any accident, let the attorneys voted best personal injury law firm get you the settlement you deserve. It's a slam dunk. Goldberg and Osborne, 1-800-THE-EAGLE. Striving to be the best never grows old. And that's especially true right now during O'Reilly Chevrolet's 100th anniversary celebration. Great customer service is what we've hung our cowboy hat on for more than a century. Even today, we have a new inventory arriving with factory incentives available, and there are great deals to be had. Check them out at O'Reilly.com, call 747-8000, or come to our party on the 23rd to Broadway next to Park Place Mall. Southern Arizona and O'Reilly Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. O'Reilly Chevrolet. Think of waking up with energy, standing tall and feeling free. Think first, chiropractic, good help is to enjoy. First Chiropractic offers military discounts to retired and disabled veterans, and they now accept patients with access insurance. For more information and to find the location nearest you, visit firstchiro.com, the most trusted name in chiropractic care. First Chiropractic, good help is to enjoy. Honey, our yard's full of weeds. Looks like a jungle and the neighbors are complaining. I know, I know. I'm trying to get rid of them, but the product I'm using, it doesn't work. Oh. Not to mention, I don't have the time. But it's not just weeds. It's not? No, I'm seeing ants. Ants? Yeah, and spiders. Ooh, spiders. I know, and I think I saw a scorpion. No way! Yes way, and there's a pet rat in our garage. <laughs> okay, I'll call University Termite and Pest Control today. We'll get rid of all of them. Okay, honey, thank you. University Termite and Pest Control, locally owned. Find them online at bepestfree.com. Sean Furrier for Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care. Spring is on its way, and we all know that extreme heat comes next. Right now is the time to get your car or truck road trip ready. And with 14 convenient locations, six decades of service, and dozens of top shop awards, Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care is the place. This month, get back big rebates on all your favorite major brand tires. Save more on the most affordable, long-lasting tires. Check out jackfurriers.com for details and money-saving coupons. Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care here to get you there. Coach Tommy Lloyd here. When I need a winning strategy for my team, nothing beats knowledge and skill. That's why I recommend Rightway Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing for all your home service needs. Having personally witnessed the impact of hard work and dedication, Rightway brings the same commitment to your home's comfort. Whether it's HVAC, plumbing, or electrical, their team always delivers excellence. With a legacy of quality service since 1959, you know you're in good hands. So give your home the best. Choose Rightway Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Call or text 520-640-CATS or visit rightwayac.com. Make the right choice for your home when it comes to windows and doors. For more than 20 years, the Window Depot has provided the best price and biggest inventory on in-stock windows and doors. The Window Depot is open to the public, so whether you're a homeowner or a contractor, you can shop the enormous warehouse. Browse the shelves with over 1,000 vinyl windows, interior and patio doors, and skylights in several varieties and sizes available to go home today. Shop thewindowdepot.com or find a location near you. The Window Depot, best price, biggest inventory. This, this, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Let's take a look at the Right Way Rundown and see what's coming up on our pregame show. Brought to you by Right Way Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Do things the right way. Final hour of the show. We'll get into our best bets here. U of A, a 7 Point favorite over the Clemson Tigers over under 153. We'll give you your scouting report. You'll hear from Brad Brunell, the head coach of the Clemson Tigers. Also, PJ Hall, Caleb, uh, I should say, Keisha Johnson, and Tommy Lloyd. What these two teams are going to need to do to navigate each other today in Los Angeles. Keys to the game, starting lineups. All of that is still straight ahead. 
on the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show. Also brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the best place to eat, drink, and play. While watching today's game between the Wildcats and Clemson. In fact, where are you watching the game today? We want to know that. Let us know. 520-848-1290. we got a couple of things that have checked in on the text line here. We've got our, our guy, uh, Fred Scheiba. I've been listening for the last hour and a half. Uh, his uh, son of the late Gene Smith. She'll be watching the game upstairs. Uh, uh, I'll hear the post game. Can't break a uh, record of beating number their three number one seeds. Could tie it, as we talked about a little bit earlier. CBS, question mark. Is the game on CBS today? I'm not even sure. I didn't even look to see what station. Yeah, the game is on CBS. Brian Anderson, Jimmy Jackson will be on the call on the TV side. Uh, ranked remaining teams, North Carolina was number three. U of A is number nine. Fred says, we'll see. Fred, we always appreciate you uh, chiming in. Arizona and Clemson for the fourth time today. Wildcats lead the all-time series three zip. They won the most recent meeting, which was back in 2012, 66-54. The two programs also met on December the 10th, 2011 in Tucson. Arizona won that game 63-47. to First meeting between the two programs came in the second round of the NCAA tournament back in 1989 in Boise, Idaho. Arizona won that game 94 to 68 and 25 points that day from Sean Elliott, 19 points from a guy by the name of Matt Muehlbach. So that is the history of this series. The Tigers have never beaten the Arizona Wildcats. All right, guys, uh, interesting Stuff came out yesterday. Well, let's let's back up to what happened earlier this week. And Kelvin, we haven't had a chance to talk about the uh, the, the the betting potential betting scandal that is about to grip the National Basketball Association, or is already gripping it as the in, investigation in Dejounte Porter of the Toronto Raptors and and prop bets that uh, came in on him for large amounts of money on the under and uh, games that he took himself out of. <laughs> and the, an eye injury. Yeah. Eye Kelvin, injury. So, like, you can't – there's nothing to test, right? <laughs> it, he picked something that was a little bit gray area. So, uh, He is the younger brother of Michael Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. came out and made a statement backing his brother. Uh, he is not – John Tate Porter has not played in the last two games since all of this broke – for the Toronto Raptors. Just and so, like, people who might not know who are listening, what happened was he played three minutes in a game where he was the number one bet player in the entire National Basketball Association in a full schedule. The number one prop bet player was Jonte Porter in a game that he got put in, played three minutes, and took himself out and said he couldn't go back in. So, super sketchy, this Kelvin, that, and it was like over under half an assist you know what i'm saying like with the numbers because he's not a crazy rotation player so the fact that all this money came in on a, a bench player coming in on the under and then him getting in those games this happened twice where he was the number one bet player of all the prop players of the national basketball association for that day and took himself out and the ncaa president charlie baker came out yesterday and said that he wants to push to ban college prop bets among, amid the uh, the gambling controversies uh, that have been happening. Obviously, one of them outside the sport of basketball and baseball involving uh, Shohei Otani. Tommy Lloyd was asked about uh, what was said by Charlie Baker, and he had this to say yesterday. I, I know as little about gambling as maybe anybody. Somebody had to explain to me what a prop bet was. Um, so I, I really don't have an opinion on it. I mean, I mean, there, there's lots of things going on in this world that, you know, require attention. Unfortunately, my attention can't be divided on those things. So I, I'm 100 percent focused just on Arizona basketball. And and I'm going to trust the powers that be will put our game in a, in a good position. And if some of those other things are causing problems, I, I'm hopeful they fix them. Now, I don't think – now, I went and looked after all this yesterday, and I, I told J-Dub, it's like I'd nev I had never even looked at any of the prop bets when I go to, to kind of check the lines for what we do with Desert Diamond Casino. I, I don't – there's a number of states that don't allow it. I believe Arizona might be one of them because when I pulled up the, the sheets yesterday, 
there were no – I couldn't find any prop bets. In fact, okay, I've, I've got the list right here. Uh, Colorado, Arizona, Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, and Oregon are the states that do not currently allow prop bets on college athletes. Kansas, so that, that's Michi- why I couldn't find it. Kansas, Michigan, Louisiana, and Wyoming are the only states that do. Yeah. So, I will, again, I would like I said, I've been looking at these lines all year because we have a segment on it. And I had never seen the like problem, when he said that I'd like I'd, I'd have never yeah. even seen a prop bet. The problem account. though is is that most bets these days are done on your phone. Yeah. So Michigan, Kansas, Louisiana, and Wyoming allow it regardless of where the games play. So the game doesn't have to be in Wyoming. You can right. make a bet in Wyoming about a game in Arizona. So, and but can I live in Arizona and make a prop bet? The prop bets have to be there. So I mean, oh, if, there's, there. if there's okay. a company right. that's there, okay. I'm not, I obviously don't have the exact fine print in front right. of me. But that's regardless of where they play. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Kelly. I, I just, you know, my, <laughs> I, I just, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I don't know how to say this, but I'll say this right here. Uh, we need to figure out these refs. <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> we talked about that yesterday. I think they more in control of what goes on <laughs> right. than anybody. Right. Than anybody. Let's, let's, let's go back to remember when the ref got in trouble. <laughs> Denny he, is that his name? Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Denny he, right. Denny he. Let's go back and figure out what he was talking about. You know, why we sweep that under the rug so fast? Well, Suns why did fans, they sweep that under the rug so fast? Suns fans and Kings fans know all about it. <laughs> yeah, we, we we talked about that yesterday on the afternoon show. There has been a there was a lot. They, when as soon as they released the list of the forty referees that were going to be refing these NCAA games this weekend in the Sweet Sixteen, the Elite Eight, there was just like all these comments. Uh, about it, and I, I read a couple of comments from from Tucson City Councilman uh, uh, Paul Cunningham, who he had put uh, several comments out on Twitter, including the fact that uh, that uh, the Wild, Wildcat Nation's favorite referee, Michael Irving, the the one who got into it with Sean Miller mm-hmm. oh so many years ago, has refed four games this year for the Wildcats, and and they've won all four games. <laughs> so I mean, they're keeping records on like this guy refed our game. This is our record. Did you see? Did you see in the women's game where the women ref, they took the ref, the women? Yes, yes, that's right. They did. Yeah, I, 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 I saw that, but I didn't. I don't know the whole story behind it. Well, she went to one of the schools. Oh, she, well, she what? What she did a, a masters or something at one of right. the schools. Uh, okay, and it was like ha- at halftime. They they didn't know until halftime, and they pulled her off the game because there's a conflict of interest. Oh yeah, and I would they love to see like what her calls were during the game. <laughs> I want to go back and see <laughs> right. she making them calls toward her school. You know? Well, that's why you see there's a number of there's a number of former Arizona Wildcat women's basketball players right. who are refing, right. but you never see them ref. The games here in Tucson in terms of the Wildcats. No, it's just an obvious yeah. conflict. It's like right. doctors operating on their children. Like there's a conflict. Risha Bristol might be one. Yeah, yeah, She's yeah. a ref. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, also asked about this yesterday was Brad Brunel. And uh, he was asked just if he has seen fans harassing his players as it relates to uh, prop bets, what they might have bet on the game and the things that are happening in the games. I haven't seen it personally. Um, it wouldn't shock me. Um, people are extremely aggressive uh, these days. You know, we get phone calls in our office sometimes when things obviously don't go better's way, and we get some nasty calls. So I know our players probably get that um, through social media. Obviously, I'm for that, and uh, you know, it's a really unique time with everything going on in college athletics, and now the gambling piece is a whole nother. Um, you know, log on the fire. Um, so it, it's really, this is so special. This whole experience as a young person is so special that I know it's professionalizing in a lot of ways. And um, I'm a little more old school and that it worries me tremendously. And, uh, you know, that's another another thing to be worried about. Quickly, for those joining us on Zoom, if you do have a question. Please. All right, that's it. Yeah, I forgot to cut the end of that off. Thank you. But, yeah, so interesting. Just interesting, uh, you know, the, you know, what the future of that might be. I, I think Charlie Baker's got the right idea. I don't think that that's, that's very healthy. I get it in professional sports. I don't know if prop bets are real healthy for, for college sports at all. And when he said they haven't been, they always been bad. They always. I remember back when I was in college. Now I don't know if they was legal betting. I know. I know some guys used to go to Mexico. Mm. 
right? But but oh yeah yeah, yeah. Well, it, offshore, right right. right. Then you also had the bookies and all the different mm-hmm. things. So they been been because I used to wonder why some of these guys used to be so mad sometimes about the teams losing, and then I figured <laughs> out oh oh they had some on their game because I used to be, I used to always wonder like why is it so personal like <laughs> lost the game but no they lost something else and we felt that around here because you know headache right that oh, yeah. was like the last big uh scandal as far as shaving points is concerned that we made public and not to say there hasn't been some other stuff since then that was a long time what was that like early 90s no, that's, a right? dallas native. that's my dallas native yeah he's, right. he's actually one of the reasons why i had my eyes on arizona i actually thought arizona state was arizona <laughs> when, when yeah. i was a young kid didn't know no better you know just a young guy but no headache Headache's great i mean he was a great player obviously got caught shaving points and that whole shady you know the the illegal side of it, which is one of the reasons why they've tried to make it more universally legalized, is because Kelvin said it's gone on, it's been going on, it's gonna go on regardless. So if you can tax it and you can make it available in a, a big public building where everybody knows you got a license for it and all those things, it makes it better. Uh, the issue here is point shaving has to affect the the lines, and that might be a twelve point spread that you win by eleven. So that doesn't affect your teams losing a game. Right, right. Uh, prop bets, it's more like, you know, I'm, I'm predicted to get five or more rebounds and I got four. <laughs> Again, victimless type of thing. Like, did that affect the outcome of the game? Hmm. When you got a situation like Jonte Porter where he goes in for three minutes and there's millions of dollars bet that he'll go under that. I mean, that's game in the system. And if there's sports as anything. Why is that even a bet, though? Well, exactly. But why is that? But let me finish really quick. Like yeah, I mean, sport, the whole point of sports is the even playing field where everybody's got the same exact likelihood of winning a game because you tip up the ball, you know, you kick the ball off, whatever the sport may be. Fans get interested and fans buy jerseys and fans go to games because they think it's on the level. So anytime that there's any kind of extracurriculars going off where the fans might think, hey, you know, what's the point, Kelvin, to go into this game and rooting for my cats if it's already predetermined? If there's some predetermined outcome, that some powers may be got going on behind the scenes. That's a big problem. But I, and I'll say this to that. I thought I ain't gonna lie. Just being an athlete, I thought it always was like that. I thought you know going into this game versus USC, you really ain't got no chance. <laughs> I mean, the, the referees, everybody go make sure they get their calls and everything like that. You know, you, some teams feel like that when they play Arizona at home, right? You understand that, and and, and to me, that's a part of the hurdle. I mean, it is so much fun beating people when when they kind of cheating. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like you, you know they got older kids on their team. You don't say anything. You don't say anything. You you take that challenge and you beat it. In the back of your mind, you, you you know what's going on. But that's been happening. That's happening in the little league right now. Right now, it's a 15-year-old playing in a 10-year-old league. Guarantee you. <laughs> so how'd that flag football go last weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been like that in AAU basketball or something. You see a kid, you're like, he got to be 18. But we're in the 12 you. We're in 12 you. So, well, what can you do? You know what I'm saying? You just got to figure out a way and, you know, and, and you become much better for overcoming them hurdles. Fellas, I mean, look no further than boxing was the number two sport behind baseball in America for a good portion of 60, 70 years. And why is boxing falling off to, like, the ninth most popular sport? Corruption. It's because yeah. there were so many heavyweight fights and, and title fights where it, it was clear to anybody watching that the fight was won by one dude and the rest gave it to somebody else. And yeah. that happened one too many times. And now where's Judges. boxing? Boxing yeah. is, like, Judges. the eighth or ninth, tenth most popular sport in America. Right, did you guys see that last fight with um with a gun No. A gun and and, and, and and the big fella out of London, I believe, in. He fell so hard it didn't even like he got hit, uh, uh, guys. Really? It didn't. It looked like it, it just looked like he just took it. I don't know. Let's just say that. But <laughs> it didn't look good. It didn't look good. <laughs> didn't look good. <laughs> what, it, it, I remember when they knocked when uh when when the when the six eight guy got knocked out for the ten count and they counted to six. Right. <laughs> you know? Like wait a minute, how long do it take to count the ten? <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right. Speaking of betting, let's find out uh, what we've got on this one today. Tucson, what are some of today's best bets? Will the Cats beat the spread? It's time to look at some of today's best bets. Brought to you by Desert Diamond Sportsbook, Arizona's best bet. All right. It is Arizona today, minus seven, over under 153. Uh, Kelvin, I'll let you go first on this one. Uh, I'm definitely going under. Uh, You're playing a Clemson team that's going to do everything in their power to slow you down. 
And I, I have to take Clemson with the seven because they play tight games. They they love it like that. I would love for Arizona to break it out, okay? But I just got to go with uh, uh, the style of play that Clemson is going to force you to play, and you, you, you're you going to have to figure out a way to beat them by two or three. Jada. Well, first, I think Arizona is going to play their best game of the year today. Mm. I think that oh. with the seniors and all this stuff, this is the time. And so there's no lackadaisical going up to Pullman or going up to Corvallis and maybe not taking it too seriously. Those days are gone. So I think Arizona is going to play their best game. However, I have a ton of respect for Clemson, so I agree. I think it's going to be low scoring. But I think Arizona wins by eight. Mm. So they do cover that number. I'll say Arizona covers and the under. I, I, I absolutely agree with uh, with you on that, J-Dub. I think it's going to be a tight game, but I think in the end, the Wildcats will get to the line and maybe lengthen it out a little bit enough to cover uh, this number. It'll be right between, I think, 7 and 10 uh, is where it'll fall. So I'm, I'm going to lay the number and take U of A, and I'll, I'll go with the under on this as well because that has been the play this postseason. We'll figure out what happens after the game. Those are today's best bets. They are brought to you by Desert Diamond Sportsbook, Arizona's best bet. This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Broadway in Tucson, Dave and Buster's Tucson, Dorado Rock, First Choice Pools, The Good Feet Store, Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care, O'Reilly Chevrolet, Ram Plumbing, Restaurant Supply Store, Rightway Heating, Cooling and Plumbing, Rocking KA Master Plan Community Design by Nature, University Termite and Pest Control. This just in, Goodfellas AC is batching up to $2,000 on federal tax credit. Whoa, seriously? <gasps> this is unbelievable. I gotta call Floyd at Goodfellas. Hello, Goodfellas. Floyd speaking. Is it true about the $2,000? It sure is. Homeowners like you may qualify for a 30% federal tax credit up to $2,000 on qualifying heat pumps. And Goodfellas will match the tax credit dollar for dollar up to $2,000. Good service, good prices, Goodfellas. Don't hold back. Just dive right in. This is Desert Diamond. The round, the clock, off the charts, over the top spectacle that puts a shine on any day, anytime. The tables are hot to the touch. The slots are spinning winners every day. And the point spreads are yours for the taking. So go ahead. Live the diamond life. Desert Diamond Casino. Visit ddcaz.com. An enterprise of the Thona Hog Nation. What up, Tucson? This is Joseph Blair, former Wildcat and assistant coach of the Washington Wizards. When I came to play basketball at the U of A in the 90s, the Tucson community became and has always remained a special part of my life. And this is why I proudly joined the Meridian Wealth Management Tucson Advisory Business Council. If you have financial questions or concerns, please be sure and call my friends Natalie or Ruben Fernandez at 719-1433 or visit online at Meridian Wealth LLC. And as always, Bear down, Tucson. Advisory services provided by Meridian Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Are you ready to adopt? Come to the Humane Society of Southern Arizona. When you adopt from us, you will save more than one life. You'll also make room for the next pet in need. The Humane Society of Southern Arizona has been compassionately serving pets and the people who love them since 1944. Our knowledgeable adoption matchmakers will help you find the right pet for your home and support you after you adopt. We are open seven days a week at our main campus at 635 West Roger Road. Learn more and see adoptable pets at hssaz.org. Experiencing the natural wonders comes easy at Rock and K. Nestled at the base of the Rincon Mountain foothills, enjoy stunning mountain views up close every day. Explore natural open space, a network of connecting trails, and a community park within the Vale School District. Visit Lennar's two communities in Rock and K with home savings up to $35,000 and limited time interest rate and closing cost incentives on select move-in ready homes. Live rockandk.com. Designed by nature, proud U of A radio broadcast sponsor. Tired of dry, itchy skin? Have mineral buildup at every faucet. Ram Plumbing's affordable green, eco-friendly water softener and alkalized purification systems are built right here in our great state of Arizona and use a fraction of the wastewater as their competitors. Want soft water, non-chlorinated or the best alkalized drinking water? You can trust Ram Plumbing to be your one-stop shop. Ask about their water taste challenge. 40th year anniversary savings up to $500 off water systems and $40 off any service. If your plumbing's in trouble, call Ram on the Double. 
Hey, sports fans, the ultimate game day experience is here. Celebrate the grand opening of Champ's Kitchen and Bar with exclusive $5 Madness specials now through April the 8th. Score $5 pizzas, $5 burgers. How about $5 pitchers? Gather your squad, catch all the action at Champ's Kitchen and Bar. It's the new MVP of sports bars here in Tucson. Swing by 7625 North La Choya Boulevard before it's too late. Broadway in Tucson presents the new 2024-2025 season, featuring six blockbuster productions, including Mamma Mia! and the Southern Arizona premieres of Clue, live on stage, Beetlejuice, Some Like It Hot, The Neil Diamond Musical, A Beautiful Noise, and Shucked. Secure your signature season tickets today and get the best seats at the best prices. Visit broadwayintucson.com and secure your 2024-2025 season tickets today. The Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show continues on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. This is Hunter who had a high hand early and off in the other night, and he picks up where he left off. You can see the two guys guarding him right there, and then all of a sudden Hunter can just basically catch and shoot. To back 20-point games in the biggest moments of the season. Hunter, friendly little bounce, and right now Clemson getting any shot that they want. As we come up on the midway point of this first half, nice catch by Hall. For so much offensive skill, Clemson right now is 9 for 14, who's the centerpiece of this Clemson squad. Our 1290 scouting report is brought to you by Ram Plumbing. When your plumbing is in trouble, call Ram on the double. All right, let's take a look at the Clemson Tigers who enter this game today with a record of 23 and 11. Uh, wins over New Mexico and Baylor, number 14 Baylor to get to this point, taking on number nine Arizona today in the Sweet 16. Brad Brunell knows that U of A is a great matchup for his team. I've uh, watched him a good bit throughout the year. Uh, Tommy's done an unbelievable job at Arizona here these last couple of years. This team, like most, uh, super dynamic offensively really good inside out offense a little bit like we play um we're very familiar with caleb love and and obviously how good a player he is from his time at carolina um you know it'll be a raucous uh crowd with a lot of arizona fans but uh we're, we're super excited to be here our guys uh have worked really hard and and uh we're looking for the opportunity i think he heard the U of A chance in Cameron Indoor Stadium <laughs> like the rest of us. I think so. I think so for sure. Uh, it's a it's a fan base that travels well, and they're going to take over Los Angeles today. You best believe. Kelvin, when you're on campus, what percentage of the people you ran into were from Cali? Woo, 80? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, and it may, be not, it may not be the case now, but back in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, it was a Everybody. lot of Cali. Yeah, so a lot of alumni – you know, they're a huge alumni base in Southern California because a lot of them moved back down there after school. I, th- I think it's still, I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but I think it's still probably, I, I would think of in terms of states outside of Arizona, it's probably still the highest. Oh. You know, I don't know if it's 80%, but it's still in terms of, you know, kids coming in. I, 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 all I know is this. I see a lot of California license plates right? when school is <laughs> in and, and a lot of erratic drivers. Let's just, <laughs> a lot of erratic drivers. Let's just say that. <laughs> Brad Brunell knows that he's got to deal with the issues inside that he is going to get from one Umar Balo. They play with pace. Um, they certainly have an inside presence. Uh, I mean, they go right to Balo on the high-low right away, initially on almost every possession. Um, Johnson is super athletic, competitive, tough. You know, beats you off the bounce, can make a three, can guard five men. He does, you know, he does everything, switches on to guards. Um, they, they just, as you would expect, a team who's as, had as much success as they have, top 10 team throughout the year, they've got a lot of really good players. They've got experience um, both on the perimeter and in the post. Now, P.J. Hall, we've talked a little bit about him. Uh, he is one of the top players on this team. Uh, P.J. Hall is uh, 6'10", out of Spartanburg, South Carolina, averaging 19.6 rebounds, shooting 49% from the field. We'll get into some more of his numbers. But one of the things that uh, 
he's had some issues with in the postseason is foul trouble. Uh, and he talked about uh, needing to do a better job with that in this game today. I probably just not put myself in positions to get those early fouls and dumb fouls. You know, I do my work early and uh, make sure I'm putting myself in positions to succeed, you know, fighting early and stuff like that. And, um, you know, just also as corny as it sounds, sticking to your fundamentals, you know, not using your hands, using your elbows and forearms and stuff and making sure you're not grabbing. All the stupid stuff that can get you those dumb fouls, try to stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do stupid stuff Don't. out there. <laughs> there you go. He is one. Uh, PG Hall is one of six players in the United States or in NCAA basketball with 600 points, 200 rebounds, 50 blocks, and 25 steals. Yeah, pretty impressive that he uh, is able to impact the game uh, the way that he does. PJ Hall. Well, he'll be the one definitely to watch today. Now. The pace that you're going to get from Clemson is is not necessarily. They're not going to be a team uh, like Long Beach that that wants to try to get out and run with us, as uh, the the saying goes. It's it's going to be a slower pace, and Arizona's going to have to adapt to that. I mean, we've played a lot of teams that play slow or whatever in our league too, and uh, I think in these tournaments, it's a lot of the game and the fight is about effort and. Uh, you know, the 50-50 balls, rebounding, guys will, get, guys will get hot and make shots or or not. It's just those things that you can control is your effort, and I think it's it's going to be a big effort game. Um, for me, I just feel like we just need to play Arizona basketball, you know. Um, they have their game plan, whether they're just used to playing slow or whatnot. We're used to playing fast, so we just got to just stick to our own identity, you know, whether uh, we, we slow down a little bit by them or we're able to speed them up. You know, game uh, the game of basketball is so unpredictable, so we're just going to see what's going to happen. Now, they may play slow, but they still average close to 80 points a game. They average 77 points to the, the Clemson Tigers, so it's not like they're going to be just walking the ball up yeah. every time. Well, the biggest chess match is going to be how many bodies Clemson throws to the offensive glass because it's not a great shooting team. They've had some moments here in the last few few games, but when you are talking about Arizona's ability to score, Kelvin, in 2.5 seconds baseline to baseline, I mean, we've seen that happen several times this year. You have to make that choice as a head coach when you're going up against the Wildcats. If you aren't shooting well and you're not sending bodies to the offensive glass, that's a long night. doesn't matter how many fast break points Arizona gets. You've already lost because that chess match starts before the game starts, Kelvin. Mm -hmm. you got to choose what kind of effort you're going to put into the offensive glass. And if you start out shooting bad, poorly, right, I mean, that can snowball pretty quick. Arizona can run off of makes or misses. We've seen that uh, all year long. Uh, I just imagine Clemson's got a lot of big bodies. They'll probably just rebound man-to-man and not send any kind of maybe uh, their threes at the glass. If they're out on the perimeter, they'll try to sprint back. But that's the big thing I'm looking for is how many offensive rebounds they get because they're going to definitely avoid early transition baskets and those seals, especially from Balo under the rim on a guard or whatever. You can't win against Arizona if you allow too much of that all game. Tommy Lloyd uh, talked about the pace. Whatever, their pace, their tempo. What, what I see when I see Clemson, I see an incredibly physical team that has a conviction to, to assert their physical will on you. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't really, you know, and I sit there when I watch them on film and say, wow, they, these guys are playing extraordinarily slow. I see they have a couple, you know, elite perimeter players. I see they have, you know, two really good big guys. I see they have good size at the other positions, and they play with effort and toughness, you know, possession by possession. I mean, that, that's what I see when I watch Clemson. Sound like down south basketball to me. And and, and, and when you look up the makeup of a team, I, I, I laugh because coaches make their team a certain way. Is He made this team where, you know, they necessarily can't really run fast. You can't change the way they play because mm. they don't really have fast guys. Uh, to be able to play that type of style. They they are a slow down type of style with, with veteran guys. Of course they're gonna take advantage of opportunities when they get it, but they want to use their 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 um um veteran leadership to be able to control the game. Mm -hmm. Ultimately Keisha Johnson says it does not matter what type of pace they play. You just got to play Arizona basketball. We can't worry about the stuff that's out of our control. I feel like what they do is pretty much out of our control. They got their own game plan, and we got to, we got our own game plan. We just got to go out, roll the ball out, and stick to what we got, and the best man will win. 
And Tommy kind of reiterated that that's the type of team he has tried to build, a team that can play and adjust to whatever style is presented to them by their opponent. When we build a team, I mean, as a staff, I mean, I, I think the first thing we always think about is we want to give our team as many chances to win games as possible. So, you know, whether that's the defensive end, the offensive end, uh, uh, you know, a secondary lineup you might use. You know, I mean, we're, we're trying to think of everything we can to give ourselves opportunities to win. So, I mean, I think with that mindset, you know, you're, you're not afraid to play different styles. And because you understand, I understand, hey, these other coaches are really good. And, and, and they're, they're going to come out with game plans. And, you know, we're not always going to be able to, to play, you know, 100 percent, you know, in, in our comfort zone. So, you know, we, we've got to we got to be comfortable, you know, being uncomfortable. So uh, I, I think our guys have done a really good job these first two games. And even even down the stretch of the season, we were seeing I mean, every game, it seemed like we were seeing a new coverage, a new type of defense, you know, that maybe the team hadn't even done that much. You know, so we were getting the kitchen sink and, and you know, that's not easy to play against on a nightly basis. But I think our guys have handled it pretty well. And uh, we were talking a little bit about earlier in, in the pest segment. Uh, I mentioned that my pest of the game was Ian Shefflin, the 6'8 junior out of uh, Loganville, Georgia. All he's done this year for them is increase uh, from year to year. So last year to this year, uh, four more points per game, five more rebounds per game, uh, six more points on his field goal percentage a game, five more, I'm sorry, six more points on his free throw percentage uh, per game, 17 point raise on his three point shooting percentage for Ian Shefflin. So he is really, and that's the reason he was named the ACC's most improved player this year. He was the only player in the ACC who averaged at least 10 points, 10 rebounds, and two assists this season. Ian Shefflin. And a lot of that's shot selection. Right, because yeah. you're talking about a guy who's not shooting very often. Like he averages six field goal attempts this year per game, and the three point shooting is shooting fifty percent <laughs> from beyond the three point line. Kelvin on point mm. six out of one point two per game. So you know, basically one three point shot. That's again, right. that's the high low situation. Don't leave him open. Uh, but I'm more worried. He's got that Charles Barkley body. I'm more worried about yeah. that dude in the at the, at the elbow. Uh, with, uh, you know, they're big at the center, at P.J. Hall down low. The high-low they've got and then finding shooters off of that action, that's the scary thing to me. So was it was it uh, Brown Brownell earlier on? Was it Shefflin or was it Hall he compared to Bill Lambeer? I can't remember which, which one. Which I think he was, he talking, was about. talking about P.J. Hall. Yeah. Okay. Right. P.J. Hall is a guy who's shooting quite a lot. So he takes about five three-pointers per game, but he tries to do most of his damage down on the block. So that Lambeer comp is Lambeer wasn't out shooting threes. He was down on the block yeah. almost always. However, if you if you got caught up in something Isaiah and Joe Dumars were doing, Lambeer would be out there at the three and could knock that shot down. All right. That is a look today at your scouting report, as always, brought to you by Ram Plumbing. That's today's 1290 scouting report, brought to you by Ram Plumbing. When your plumbing is in trouble, call Ram on the double. 520-848-1290. Still some chance for you to get in on the program. Let's talk to Team Money. You're on the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to tip off on Wildcats Radio 1290. Hey, gentlemen. I was uh, trying to stay out of it, but you guys brought up uh, Shifflin. Shifflin. Um, <laughs> I swear, uh, just watching the condensed game, I swear dude had like a sweat streak down the back of his jersey before the five-minute mark. Um like that dude, it looks like the world's tallest um, hobbit. I, I don't know. It's just wait. Did you say hobbit? Off, the hobbit. <laughs> if that dude goes off against us, uh, we deserve to lose. I, I think it's just one of those games where you're gonna have to get out and run fast, put some points on these dudes, lock them up on defense, and choke them out before the 15 minute you know 15 minute break. Um, because if they let them hang around like Baylor did, just kind of this like lack of days ago, like that's their game. It's like these weird Rudy Poot extra passes in the lane. Like, I don't know, like just watching it was painful. Um, Arizona is, is a way better squad, but if they're going to play down to the competition today, they're going to lose. Good stuff, team money. Good stuff. We appreciate your call. Thank you, sir. Bear down. 
Five two zero eight four eight twelve ninety. The number to get in on the program. I think the big problem is is not Ian as much as that team, right? Because you're talking about like none of those guys, Kelvin, maybe are super scary individual. But when you got four or five guys, all who are multiple level scorers, and again, not the athleticism I'm- you're going to see from Arizona, but. When they're all third year and fourth year players mm-hmm. with the same program, the yeah. only guy who came in there is Gerard. Right. All those other guys, they aren't, it's the sum of the parts. Yes, all those sir. guys, and when they play that high low, they're playing team basketball. And, I don't worry about Ian by himself as a player you got to right. give extra defensive attention to, but there's other guys on that team right now who are playing really well, leads to open shots. He's well, a big dude. Well, that's where they get you at, J Dub. Where they get you at is exactly what our caller just did. You underestimate them. You look at them, how they look, and you're like, oh, they're, they're not high flyers, and they're not fast, and they're not this. Yeah, but they're in a sweet 16. You better have a healthy respect for who you're going against because whatever your record is, whatever your style of play, don't matter right now. You just have to figure out a way to get a dub. So, yeah, man, that's the way these teams beat you. That's how you get upsets because you you look at them and be like, that look like nothing and and it ends up costing you because you get in that game and they start boxing you out and they start hitting you with screens and they start moving the ball making that extra pass what, what, what we call it the one more pass the hockey assist and then you're knocking down shots from everywhere and then you're looking around and you're looking at our guys like oh you you're more athletic well they don't have nothing to do with right now this time because basketball to me and i'm gonna say this is one of the first games ever dk because you get the ball Every time that team scores, you get, get the, the ball, ball to right. come and get to play your style of play. And it's whoever whoever can stick to their style the most and, and, and really make their thing win, puts their, I mean, really make their game go is the ones who put themselves in a position to win. All right. Rennie Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show. We've got some more to come as we take you to the 409 Tip-Off, Arizona and Clemson from Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles. With Kelvin Ifan, J.W. Madden, I'm David Kelly. You're listening to Wildcats Radio 1290. This, this is the Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Honey, our yard's full of weeds. Looks like a jungle and the neighbors are complaining. I know, I know. I'm trying to get rid of them, but the product I'm using, it doesn't work. Oh. Not to mention, I don't have the time. But it's not just weeds. It's not? No, I'm seeing ants. Ants? Yeah, and spiders. Ooh, spiders. I know, and I think I saw a scorpion. No way. Yes way, and there's a pet rat in our garage. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll call University Termite and Pest Control today. We'll get rid of all of them. Okay, honey, thank you. University Termite and Pest Control, locally owned. Find them online at bepestfree.com. Do you often worry you left the garage door open? With a LiftMaster garage door opener powered by MyQ, you'll never worry again. You can control, secure, and monitor your garage from your smartphone anytime from anywhere through the MyQ app. As an authorized LiftMaster dealer, we have smart openers designed for your needs, including belt drive motors for ultra-quiet operation, integrated camera for live video streaming, and battery backup that lets you in when the power is out. Kaiser Garage Doors and Gates is your authorized local LiftMaster dealer. Visit kaiserdoor.com for more information. Caruso's, a Tucson tradition since 1938, located on historic 4th Avenue. For four generations, Caruso's handmade sauce has been prepared with love by a family member, using only the best ingredients. Enjoy specialty Italian dishes like lasagna al forno, chicken tetrazzini, real Italian sausages, spectacular pizza, as well as many vegetarian options. Caruso's offers outdoor dining on their garden patio with indoor dining also available. Open Tuesday through Sunday with all your favorites available for takeout. For more information, call 520-624-5765 or visit their website at carusositalian.com. Does it feel like the price of everything is going up, up, up? We can't control the price of gas or groceries, but at Royal Buick GMC, we never add market adjustments, even while other dealers add fees because inventory is limited. At Royal Buick GMC, you can rest assured you won't pay market adjustments, and we stand by our transparent online pricing. Royal Buick GMC, the dealership that's different. OAC plus tax, title, license, dealer installed options, and 529 dock fee. Royal Buick GMC, in the Auto Mall and at RoyalTucson.com. If you're a dude yourself or looking for quality car parts in Tucson, look no further. Advance Auto Parts has six Tucson locations with over 75 years in business. Advance Auto Parts is the largest car parts retailer in the U.S., and customers know they can trust their products, like diehard batteries. Now with free installation, only found at Advance Auto Parts stores. Take advantage of our same-day delivery and pickup. Just visit our website at stores.advanceautoparts.com. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Advance Auto Parts, for all your car repair needs. Now a proud radio sponsor of the University of Arizona Wildcats. 
The Window Depot has everything you need to create the kitchen or bathroom of your dreams. Browse the aisles of in-stock cabinets available in a variety of sizes and configurations and instantly elevate your space today. Visit a showroom and let our experts guide you. Whether you're choosing from ready-to-go designs or creating a custom masterpiece, we can help you select the perfect wood type, color, and style. And top it off with unique hardware to complete your look. Find a location near you at thewindowdepot.com. The Window Depot. More than a window store. Desperate buyers have created tremendous opportunity for sellers. If you've had the slightest thought of selling your home, it's time to call Sean Poston with the Poston Results Team at Keller Williams, Southern Arizona. Why choose the Poston Results Team? Past performance, more money in your pocket, over a 65% referral rate, an incredible Poston Results Team staff, and most important, communication, because you and your home matter. The Poston Results Team. When buying and selling really mattered, go to TucsonHomeValues.com. That's Tucson Home Values with an S dot com. Think of waking up with energy, standing tall and feeling free. Think first, chiropractic, good help is to enjoy. For over 30 years, Tucson has been putting its trust in First Chiropractic for auto and on-the-job injuries. They're locally owned and a proud sponsor of the U of A radio broadcast. So if you've been injured, make the right choice first. First Chiropractic, good health is to enjoy. The Meridian Wealth Management Countdown to Tip-Off Show continues on the home of Arizona men's basketball, Wildcats Radio 1290. Cheeks down to the right wing, bounce inside for Holmes, stolen away by Bradley, and off to K.J. Lewis, and a foul on Dayton. Oh my goodness, Jaden Bradley off the bench today. He has done just about everything. That might be the play of the game. Arizona, Clemson, we are getting closer and closer to tip-off. Network will take you from 3 till 4.09 in Los Angeles. And the Sweet 16 round of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. 520-848-1290. You can call or text us at that number. Paul and Phoenix checks in about this comparison, guys. I think Keisha Johnson, very similar to Eddie Smith back in the early days of, uh, he spells it lewd. We got we to gotta work on Paul, his spelling. Lewd Olson, L-E-W-D. Uh, loot was anything but lewd. Paul, but I get what you're saying right there. Uh, well, Paul is visually impaired, <laughs> oh. so he might have just been voiced and texting it or whatever, okay. and it just heard him wrong. All right. I will say that. There you go. I didn't see him play, Kelvin. I'm a little no, too young. I was, I was like, I'm a little too young for Eddie that. Eddie Smith? I did see, I, know, I did with my own eyes see games with that crew. I was there, but I was also like seven, six, something like that. So I don't have much of a memory, but if he says so, I trust his, I trust his opinion if that's the comp. I got one for you. Bennett Davidson. Oh, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Super springy. Yeah, Keyshot great defender. Bennett Davidson? Mm-hmm. All right. That's a good one. Bennett That's Davidson. a good one right there. Uh, so earlier, uh, obviously, Tommy Lloyd is uh, in his third year. Uh, but first, let's hear from uh, uh, Keyshot Johnson. Keyshot Johnson, we were talking just kind of about uh, how the Wildcats uh, will potentially try to uh, attack this uh, slowed down pace for Clemson, but uh, Keyshot says, hey, uh, it, it's all going to be about what the Wildcats do at the defensive end of the floor. In basketball, the key is always defense. Defense is always the key, you know. You can't always control what uh, what shots you can make and and, uh, came and don't make, but you can control making it hard on your opponent as, as, as possible. I mean, there you go. Defense, uh, again, if you're going to win, if you're going to get to a championship game, it's going to be at the defensive end of the floor for sure. 100%. I mean, when they say championship, of course, you got to score the ball, but being able to take people away and slow people down and and, uh, make them come up short of their average is very important. I got to come for P.J. Hall, too. Yeah. Uh, 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 What's my guy? Oh, what did I write that at? Uh, Ben Carlson. Utah. From Utah, yeah. Utah. Yeah, oh, and that's again, Carlson, yeah. We talked yesterday on the show about that inverted, bringing your five out. That's Arizona's struggle with that at times. But back to the defense thing really quick. I mean, Coloco, probably best interior defender in, in Tommy Lloyd's tenure. Dalen Terry may be best perimeter defender. But this is the best defensive team by far. And that includes KJ uh, off the bench. I mean, Jane Bradley off the bench. I mean, the, the guys you can bring, the perimeter pressure you can bring off the bench. And Pella and, and Keyshot being so versatile with Balo protecting the rim. Just and obviously, uh, Kalen, uh, Kylan, excuse me, and uh, Caleb Love 
incredibly good plus defenders as well. This is the best defensive unit. And if they put it all together, guys, I mean, it will be how limit how much they limit their opponents down these next few games past today, if they get past today, is going to be the key, obviously. All right, before we get to keys, I want you to hear uh, Tommy Lloyd yesterday uh, when he was asked uh, about the Arizona basketball. I don't think he was talking about specifically about basketball alumni, but I think I think that was one of the reasons. That was the question. The question was about about, basketball alumni. Yeah, the question was about the alumni. Yeah, basketball alumni not being happy when he was hired as the head coach at Arizona. You know, they had a right to feel that way. I mean, you know, this is a. It's an amazing program, and, and it's an amazing legacy, an amazing tradition. And, you know, I, I probably, you know, did I not know myself so well? I probably would have wondered what the heck are they doing hiring an assistant coach from the WCC. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think that's all justified. And, and I knew that, you know, me just talking or, or whatever wasn't going to earn people's respect. We needed to come and do a great job on a day-to-day basis and, and run, a, run the program in a way that our former players would be proud of. Our, our former players are a, a huge part of, you know, what has put our program in such a great position, you know, nationally. I mean, we, these guys, are they're, you know, the passion they have for Arizona and the talent they have for basketball players, the great coaches that we've had, you know, um, from Fred Snowden to Lute Olson to Sean Miller, you know what I mean? Those guys have all made my job better. And, and, and the former players are the ones, you know, that's the blood, sweat, and tears. So those guys had a right to feel that way. You know, I, I, I wasn't an Arizona guy at that time, but um, I tell you what, I am now. <laughs> he is now. Yeah, he is. He is now. I like the way he ended that right there. And and, and I can speak to that a little bit. I think I know a little bit some about the <laughs> former players, right? Right? I can speak to that a little bit. I think what the issue was was that, uh, you know, not having head coaching experience mm-hmm. and a lot of guys basically being told that you can't get that opportunity because you don't have head coaching experience. Right. And uh, uh, Jason Terry and Damon Stoudemire, um, they got interviewed. And I, I, I think some of the guys felt like it wasn't genuine. Mm. They felt like they already had their guy, which they did. We all know, right, Jada? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They already had their guy. They were just waiting on him to get through with the tournament, right? With the tournament, and I just think that rubbed guys the wrong way because the way it's supposed to have been, even even when uh, they hired Fish, uh, you know, first time head coach. I mean, it, it, you know, the way it had always been told to us was that if you hadn't been a head coach, coach before, right. you know, you don't just get to get a seat like the University of Arizona. Real mm-hmm. quick, when RJ brought the podcast in for the Red Blue game, he he went into great detail about this, and what he said, all those guys complaining online were all about was that getting public interviews for former players at this job, even if they weren't going to get the job, signals out to the rest of America, these are serious candidates for other jobs. And that was the big problem most alumni that I heard had with that hiring process was that they needed to give more of the alumni a a public interview for the Arizona job, even if maybe they didn't have the experience, like Kelvin said, that they were looking for, it still signals to other schools, hire these dudes, they're ready. Yeah. All right, keys to the game. Wildcats Wildcats fans, fans. our keys to the game are brought to you by the Royal Automotive Group. Royal Automotive, the dealership that is different. All right, we'll fly through these. J-Dub, get us going. Well, first and foremost, I think you got to limit turnovers. Anytime that Arizona struggled in the last uh, stretch, it's been sloppy play. And we saw that in just the last game. They had about a 10-minute stretch where they only scored three points. A lot of sloppy turnovers can't do that today. Number two, stay with the shooters from Clemson. I think the high-low is going to be the big focal point for the Arizona defense today between P.J. and Ian. That high-low is rough, but you cannot lose track of those shooters. And number three... Uh, don't force contested Jays. We saw that they kept, they held Baylor to 16 points under their season average. Uh, you got to make sure that you get in the paint. Balo, balo, balo. We always talk about it. I'd like to see at least 40 points in the paint today. Lower scoring game, so it won't go quite 50, but you got to get in the paint. Do not settle for contested jump shots. Those are my keys. Calvin. Uh, I think Keyshawn and Pella have to do a great job limiting P.J. Hall. I think they're going to put those smaller guys on him because he plays a little bit on that perimeter. And I think against the bigger kid, um, I don't know how to say his name, Shushlin. Uh Shefflin. Shefflin. Uh, uh, I think we'll go Balo on him to just have a little more girth against him. Uh, I also believe that Balo needs to be aggressive and we need to get the ball to him down in the post. 
uh, to 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 put some foul pressure on PJ uh, PJ uh, Hall, right? Uh, and and see if we can't, you know, see if he can uh, get him back into some of that foul trouble he used to getting into. And uh, we have to take away the catch and shoot threes. No, I said we have to get some catch and shoot threes mm. to open up the inside uh, for Balo and those guys, so they can get. We have to knock down some shots from the perimeter because we we have to open up that paint for our guys to get some scoring. I want to see them get into Joseph Gerard the third really early. He has not shot the ball well in this tournament. I think if you get in his head early, take him out of the game to keep him ice cold. Uh, that's going to be one big key for me. Uh, in, in terms of Arizona winning this game today. Uh, again, and I, I'll say it again, I want to see uh, uh, more more of a commitment to Umar Balo in this ball game. Uh, hopefully, if, uh, if you can shut down that high-low like you were talking about, you can keep Umar in the game a little bit longer so he can get more touches. So not only can he uh, allow you to score on the inside, but you can build up that, uh, that foul count to get yourself to the foul line because that's where Arizona is so good this season. And, of course, transition, transition, transition. Uh, they may want to play slow, but you got to find your ways and opportunities. Take advantage of every opportunity to get the ball out in transition in this ball game. Those are your keys. Wildcats fans, that's our keys to the game. Brought to you by the Royal Automotive Group. Royal Automotive, the dealership that is different. All right, it's been 23 years since the Wildcats have been to the Final Four. Is this the year that the Wildcats get over that hump, Tommy Lloyd? I mean, first off, I don't see a hump. I mean, I, I, I don't see a hump. I mean, I'm just a basketball coach at Arizona in my third year. Um, I see opportunity. So, you know, we, we look at opportunities, you know, as a privilege, and, and we want to take advantage of them. With that being said, 100% we understand that every opportunity doesn't ensure you're going to be successful or you're going to be able to take that next step because it's going to be really challenging. So, uh, and, and to be honest with you, we're, we're a, I know it's boring, but we're a, a one day at a time, one game at a time, you know, cliche coach, cliche team. And, and so we're 100% focused on Clemson and we haven't looked anything beyond that. The foundation of a great college basketball team begins with the starting lineup. Today's starting lineup is brought to you by Rocking K, a master plan community designed by nature. Starting lineups for your Arizona Wildcats at one guard, Kylan Boswell, 6'2", sophomore out of Champaign, Illinois, had a career-high 20 points in the first round of this NCAA tournament. Caleb Love, 6'4", senior out of St. Louis. Against Clemson in three games in his career, averaging 14 points, three rebounds, and three assists. Pella Larson, 6'5", senior out of Naka, Sweden. In the tournament so far, how about 14 points, five rebounds, and six assists for Pella. Keisha Johnson at a forward, 6'7", fifth-year senior out of Oakland, California. He has at least one three-point field goal in the last seven games. Umar Balo is the man in the middle, seven-foot redshirt senior out of Mali, the career field goal leader at 65% for Arizona. That's going to wrap up our program. For J-Dub, for Kelvin, I'm David Kelly. Coming up next, number nine, Arizona and Clemson in the Sweet 16. You'll hear it on Wildcats Radio 1290. <laughs> This hour of the Meridian Wealth Management pregame show is brought to you by Broadway in Tucson, Dave and Buster's Tucson, Dorado Rock, First Choice Pools, The Good Feet Store, Jack Furrier Tire and Auto Care, O'Reilly Chevrolet, Ram Plumbing, Restaurant Supply Store, Rightway Heating, Cooling and Plumbing, Rocking KA Master Plan Community Designed by Nature, University Termite and Pest Control. My heat and air work. If there's a hot spot in your house, you may have leaky ductwork. The Department of Energy says 95% of homes do. Those leaks can pull in dirt and humidity. I'm Ron Arenas, the owner of Picture Rocks Cooling. Ask how we can tackle those leaky ducts and keep cool air in and dirt and humidity out with AeroSeal. Call Picture Rocks at 520-440-4069.
It's a party 100 years in the making, and all of Tucson is invited. Saturday, March 23rd, starting at 11 a.m., we'll kick off our 100-year anniversary party at O'Reilly Chevrolet. Along with the Chevy Classic Car Show, there'll be food trucks, balloon twisters, a caricature artist, and much more. Our cake-cutting ceremony will start at 5 p.m., and our price-cutting, well, that's been going on for more than a century. So put it in your cell phone for the 23rd and see us on Broadway next to Park Place Mall. Or go to O'Reilly.com for more details. O'Reilly Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. As Arizona's leading personal injury law firm for more than 30 years, Goldberg.